Welcome to Winston-Salem, North Carolina, home of the Carolina Disco Turkeys, who are the host of today's contest. I'm Graham Tuck with Brett Wiseman beside me for this game between the Disco Turkeys and the Greensboro Monarchs. And it is the third time, excuse me, these two teams have met. And we'll get into the game day gobble starting things off. This is the first event of the weekend. It's Dash City Independence Celebration, and it should be a good one between the Monarchs and the Disco Turkeys, who, as mentioned, have met twice before already this season, both times very close contests. The first one, a 5-4 to four victory for Greensboro, and the second time, 5-3. to three. So both of those games coming down to the wire, being decided in the final inning. And, Brett, what are you looking for in this contest? Should be a pretty good one, as mentioned. Should be a pretty good one for sure. And for Carolina, I'm looking for a complete nine innings. Uh, to this point, we have seen glimmers of such, um, but last night, I think, is the game that um, you kind of want to build off of in reverse, right? You, you, you kind of don't necessarily need a game like that, but if there's a game that's going gonna, that's gonna to wake up the bats and, and get everybody's mojo going, it's that one. Um, I, I'm looking for a reversal of fortune, so to speak, this afternoon. And last night was one to forget, but maybe not. If, the, if you look at it the way that you are, you want to build off of it in the opposite direction. Carolina absolutely trounced by Boone. They were only down 4-3 to three going into the fourth inning, and Boone just absolutely poured it on in the last three innings, coming out victorious 15-4. to four. And that was one game where the bullpen couldn't put it together. Nolan Fernandez... Only four runs through six innings pitched, so a pretty good appearance in his first start for the Disco Turkeys. And today, they'll be looking to, as you said, bounce back against the Monarchs, who had phenomenal bullpen support in the last two games that they played against Carolina. Absolutely. Alejandro Rodriguez in that, in that first game here in Winston-Salem was a godsend for the Monarchs, and they had good bu bullpen help uh, the next game as well. So... The other side of the ledger for Carolina, you got Chase Jesse starting on the mound and a lineup that has somebody that we haven't seen in a while that has been a producer in his appearances so far, finally back in. And the guy that you're teasing right now would be none other than Hayden Setzer finally making a start at Truist Stadium. He's only played in four games this year. It was the first four games of the year in which the Disco Turkeys went one and three, all four of those games on the road, one against the High Toms, then a contest against the Mustangs, back to Thomasville for a game against the Locos, and then another contest against the High Toms. They won the first, lost the last three, and then it was back to Truist Stadium for Carolina, and since then Hayden Setzer has been out, but uh, the pitcher and first base two-way player, is back, and he should be back in a big way for Carolina. He was a very, very good bat for them it's before a big he bat was hurt. This lineup has certainly been missing. You touched on it. The first game in the history of this ball club against the High Point Thomasville High Toms of the CPL. Hayden Setzer, fourth at bat in team history, three run bomb. He's batting 429 in those first four games. He had three hits, four RBIs, and a home run. He also reached base on a walk five times. So. Setzer's a guy that knows how to get on base. Scout Nichols' teammate at Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute from Salisbury, North Carolina, the 6'3", 190 left-hander. He's a sophomore, and he went to East Rowan High School, so a lot of players for the Disco Turkeys coming out of that region. Scout Nichols of West Rowan High School. And that'll get us into our keys of the game and player to watch we already touched on the player to watch it's got to be Hayden Setzer right yeah no doubt about it uh, again that's a bat that this ball club has certainly been missing and one they look to get back in a big way today and Brett you always have some keys of the game and 99 times out of 100 they end up proving that they're very helpful if the team follows them and if they don't it proves costly so what are they today well hopefully I'm right today number one Selective amnesia, short memory. Forget about last night. Forget what happened. Take this stretch of games one game at a time. I know it sounds cliche, but the rest of the season, so to speak, starts today. Block everything else out. Play number two in the keys, a complete nine innings, offensively, defensively, pitching-wise, 
at the plate, just play a complete nine-inning ball game. Number three, you need competitive, aggressive at-bats. Not overly aggressive, but you need to be on your toes at the plate. And when you get a pitch in your happy zone, let it rip. And that'll do it for the game day gobble today. You heard it here first. Brett Wiseman's keys to the game and the player to watch, Hayden Setzer, will definitely be keeping an eye on him. And that'll get us into our Foothills starting lineups presented by Foothills Brewing. Try any of Foothills' great craft brew or coffee at any of their three triad locations. Find out more at foothillsbrewing.com. And we will start things off today with the Disco Turkeys, the homebound Disco Turkeys starting lineup. It starts off with Deion Tubbs, the center fielder, leading things off. And behind him is Kix Farrell, the third baseman. Austin St. Laurent back in the starting lineup tonight playing shortstop and batting third, and Hayden Setzer playing at first base and batting cleanup. Logan Conklin gets the start at second base, and he'll be batting fifth. Henry Kohler in left, batting sixth. Dane Stewart starting in right and batting seventh. Christian Ezell behind the plate wearing number 10 and batting eighth, and Nick McAdon, the designated hitter, batting ninth. And the starter on the bump tonight for Carolina will be Chase Jesse, who has not had a start in quite a while, but... He's been very good out of the bullpen as of late. He's somewhat filled into the closer role, and he's done very well in it. And we'll go on to the starting lineup for the Greensboro Monarchs. It'll be Justin Guy leading things off in center field. Larry McMillian in right, batting second. Isaiah Rem, who was the shortstop who came on to pitch in the second contest between these two teams last Sunday, is batting third and playing short. Devin Bartley behind the dish. Batting cleanup in his usual spot, one of the best players on this Monarchs roster. Isaiah Hairston playing first base, batting fifth. Eli Willen back in the five hole at third base, batting sixth. Alejandro Rodriguez, the story of the game this past Friday, who came in and dominated in a bullpen appearance. Batting seventh, the designated hitter. Banks Starbuck back at second base, batting eighth. And Devin Tonkins, the left fielder, batting ninth. And it'll be Patty McGonigal pitching tonight for the Monarchs. And that'll do it for our pregame show. We'll bring you the first inning of action here in Winston after the starting lineups and national anthem are announced here in Winston. Stay tuned for Disco Turkeys Baseball after this.
We're back here for the first inning of action here in Winston-Salem. It's Chase Jesse on the mound for the Disco Turkeys. Great rendition of the national anthem just finished up. And for the Disco Turkeys, this is one of the most well-rounded starting lineups we've seen in some time. This is the lineup to get it going, I think. There's a full dugout of subs, too. Um, a full dugout of pitching depth, of infield depth, of outfield depth. Um, this is the most complete. Um, we've seen this ball club fielded out uh, in the last week or so. And I think this is the day, this is the time to get this ship rolling, not just today and for tomorrow and the rest of the homestand, but for the rest of the season as we officially commence the second half. 20 games down, 16 to go for Carolina. And Hasn't gone the way they wanted it to so far. A record of 5-15 and 15 coming into game number 21. But no time like the present to turn that around. Yeah, and as I said, it, 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 sometimes it, it can take a night like last night to, to wake up a ball club. And if there's any ball club we know that can break out of a funk and do so while having fun and uh, getting their reps in, which is what they're here for ultimately, it's this, this club right here. The only players potentially missing from this lineup that you might want to have in there, Caleb Smith and Dino Tharp. But beyond that, not much to complain about whatsoever. Hayden Setzer's back, and that's, that, that's big right there in and of itself. So we're just about ready to go here, and it's Justin Guy stepping in, the normal leadoff man for Greensboro. A shout-out to the Dash uh, grounds crew as well for the uh, red, white, and blue paint in the batter's boxes and around the track and the red, white, and blue stripe on the pitching rubber, too. Guy one for seven in the first two games against Carolina. Has not faced Chase Jesse yet. And we're underway here as the first pitch from Jesse is fouled back out of play for strike one. Good first pitch right there. Challenged him with a fastball. Good crowd still filing in here. Very good crowd so far, and it looks like more waiting to get in. Oh, one from Jesse. Spikes its way into the plate, and it's one and one. Haven't seen Chase on the bump in a little bit. But he's looked good when he's been out there. Again, made that inaugural start and was very, very good against the high toms in that game. Here's the 1-1 one, one from Jesse, and it's swung on and missed. Good pitch there from number nine, and it's one and two. And Jesse, that's the thing. Unlike a lot of guys at this level can hit up to maybe 90, 92, 93, and he can spot that fastball really well, too. 1-2, big pitch, and it's grounded to the right side. Conklin rounds it off and makes the throw in time for out number one. Boy, I'll tell you, Justin Guy made that play a lot closer than I think it should have been. That's why he's in the leadoff spot. He busted it down the first baseline. Credit to him, but good form play by Conklin. A good first out from Jesse, getting the, what, exactly what he needed right there, ground ball. It'll bring up Larry McMillian, who... Did not play in either of the first two games between these two clubs. And the first pitch he sees is swung on and missed. First strike one. There's that big fastball again. And McMillian was way behind that pitch. If I'm Jesse, I'm going back to it. Here's the 01. He will outside corner call it strike two. Absolutely perfect spot for that thing. Pinpoint. Jesse up 02. Here's the big pitch. Swung on and missed. Three pitches, three strikes, and it's out number two. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Larry McMillian. Chase Jesse came right after him, wasted no time. Three fastballs down the pipe. See you later. And I touched on it briefly. McMillian had no prayer. Looked like he was a couple hours behind that first fastball, and credit Jesse recognizing that. Went right back, back to, to it. it twice in a row. Straight back to the well, tripling up on that fastball, and it paid off. It'll bring in Isaiah Rem. And the first pitch he sees is in the dirt ball one. I like the idea, though, first pitch breaking ball. Rem was 0 for 5 in the second of two contests between these two teams. And he's ahead 2 in the count. 2 0 in the count now, I should say. And in the first game, he was 2 for 4 with two singles. Uh, Chase has got to reel this thing back in here. 
As you said, there's a reason he's Isaiah Rims hitting third in this lineup. He's a main cog for Greensboro. Has been all year. Hasn't quite gotten it together at the plate, though, against Carolina. See if Jesse can get back in the count. 3-0, and it's in the dirt ball four. First base runner of the day issued by Chase Jesse. And coincidentally, the first left-handed batter he faces where he has the advantage, so to speak, and went down in the zone all four pitches, three of which in the dirt. So there's the mentality. So to bring up Devin Bartley, who delivered the biggest hit of the weekend for Greensboro last weekend, it was an RBI single, two RBI single at that, that gave Greensboro the lead for good in the first game, and he lines that one to the third base side. Farrell with a pick on the one hop and the throw to first in time. Kicks Farrell with, yet again, a phenomenal play in the field. Nothing new for him. That's just a normal day's work. And so that'll be how the first inning ends, and we'll go to the bottom half of it. Greensboro not able to get anything done after the two-out walk from Isaiah Rim. So we'll go to the bottom of the first. Carolina up to bat after this. We're back here at Truist Stadium where the Disco Turkeys are up to bat for the first time. Top three up in the order, it's Dion Tubbs, Kicks Farrell, and Austin St. Laurent with Hayden Setzer, who has missed the last 16 games for Carolina back in the lineup for the first time since June 2nd. It's been a full month, and the team's glad to have him back. Dion Tubbs leading things off, and the first pitch he sees is fouled back 0-1. Patty McGonigal on the mound for Greensboro against Carolina for the first time this season. There's key to the game number one, aggressiveness. And that's something that Dion has been doing the last week and a half or so better than anybody. He attacks first pitches more than anyone else on this team and it works out for him a lot of the time. Here's the 0-1. Good job by Dion to hold off on that one. It gets away from Bartley behind the plate and the count goes to 1-1. One one. Maybe a little crossed up there, I don't know, but uh, it was a good spot on the inner half against a, a righty to a lefty hitter. Especially a guy like Dion that likes to slash it. One one outside, two and one now. Good take right there. Dion Tubbs riding a seven game hitting streak coming into this one. See if he can keep going. Two one. 
Pitch in the dirt. Good job by Dion to hold off. And it is three and one now. Yeah, that can be a tempting pitch. Especially for a guy like Dion, as we said, that likes to slash the baseball the other way and find a gap. Hitters count for number three. And here's the pitch. Right over the plate. And the count runs full. Yeah, that was a strike, Dion. I mean, it's not a bad take with one strike, but... But that's the pitch he should be looking for, 3-A-1 in the count. Exactly. It's a fastball in the middle away. Here's a 3-2. Ran in on him, and a leadoff walk for the leadoff man, Deion Subs. Well, that 3-1 take didn't come back to bite him. That's a pitch that, as we said, a guy that likes to slash and find gaps, that's one he should be sitting on. But uh, all that matters for Dion is that he gets on base, and he does just that right there. And he is a menace and a nuisance to the opposition when he gets on. And that's the best way to put it. Dion Tubbs on the year has 13 stolen bases. Yes, you heard that correctly. 13. Lucky number 13. The next closest behind him has six. So it brings up Kicks Farrell with a runner on first. Dion off and running. First pitch, ball in the dirt. Bartley will throw on to second. It's oh not even goodness. close. Make it 14. Wasted no time. The first pitch to Kicks Farrell, Dion takes right off, and there's not even a chance for Bartley. So seven pitches into the game for McGonagall, and there's already a runner in scoring position with no outs. And that is what Dion Tubbs can do right there. 1-0 to Farrell. Line back up the middle. That's going to drop for a base hit. Dion Tubbs rounding third, heading for home. The throw from center, not in time. Disco Turkey's up 1-0. That's what speed does right there. Dion gets aboard with the walk. Before the ball even leaves the hand of the pitcher for Greensboro, he's off to second. He steals the bag. Kicks. First pitch he sees in the A, or the second pitch he sees in the AB, the 1 0. Lines it back up the middle. And Dion is on his horse, and there's no chance to get him at the plate. That is called manufacturing a run to a T right there. That's exactly how you do it. Already one run on the board. Runner on first, and Austin St. Lawrence up. Still no outs. First pitch to St. Laurent, outside corner, good spot, called strike one. Yeah, really good spot right there. To a guy like Austin that's kind of been prone to go to that outside fastball and try and pull it. Throw back to Farrell, was closer Ooh. than it should have been, but he's safe. And we saw Kicks do that a few times last night, Graham. Maybe Greensboro watched Maybe the playback. Maybe Greensboro, back. I think, watched the, watched the film a little bit. Farrell got a little jumpy over there at first base a couple times against Boone last night. Didn't come back to bite him, but it almost did once. Almost did right there, too. Oh, one in the dirt. It gets away from Bartley. Kicks is off and running for second. The throw. He, wow, he got under the, the tag. The throw beat him, but he's safe at second base. How? I don't know. And the throw beat him by a full step. And it was a ball in the dirt that counts one and one. And he didn't get as good of a jump on that as he probably should have. Plus, I don't think it got as far away from him as he thought it did in, in Kicks' case, but he's safe. And there's no instant replay. So. so make it stolen base number six on the year for Kicks Farrell. That'll tie him for second on the team with Caleb Smith. The 1-1 pitch to St. Laurent is fouled back for strike two. That's a good hack right there, though. When the count's even and you get a fastball like that, let it rip. One, two to St. Laurent is the count. Farrell on second. Deion Tubbs already into score on the RBI single from kicks. One, two in the dirt, two and two now. Good discipline right there to lay off. And look who's on deck. It's Hayden Setzer set to make his first appearance at the plate since June 2nd. But right now it's a two, two count to St. Laurent, the pitch. Driven to the right side, a great diving stop by the first baseman, and St. Lorenz going to beat out the throw. Wow. Harrison got the ball in his glove on the dive, but he couldn't make it back to first in time. McGonagall didn't do him any favors. Now it's runners on the corner still with nobody out. Well, St. Lorenz might have beaten that with his speed regardless. The pitcher didn't quite get over there, but oh, I love the head first slide. It's energy like that. As dangerous as it might be in some cases, but it's energy like that. When you do that and turn back to the dugout, that gets the boys going right there. And now the big boys at the plate. Hayden Setzer already with one three-run home run on the year. 
Throw back to St. Laurent. Uh -oh. They got him, but he's trying he's to get in the pickle. In the pickle. And the throw to second. Fit Farrell's off and running. St. Laurent's out, but he does his job as Farrell comes in to score, and it's 2-0 Disco Turkey. St. Laurent immediately, as soon as he got into that rundown, pointed to kicks Farrell and said go because that's his job. You said it. To stay in the pickle long enough for Farrell to make it home, and nobody in red and white even noticed that. They focused in on making the tag instead of seeing St. Laurent point and trying to go home. Setzer, first pitch he sees back from a month off due to injury is a swing and a miss for strike one. I like it, though. That one's outside, and the count will even up. Magana goal now up to 15 pitches just through a third of an inning. Logan Conklin standing on deck. Henry Kohler behind him at the top of the dugout. 1-1 one, one pitch in the dirt, 2-1. like Hayden's approach so far. Looks like he broke out some new cleats, too. Yeah, they look pretty very, nice. Very, very red, white, and blue. I can't quite tell what they are. They're nice is what they are. 2 nothing Disco Turkeys. Here's the 2-1 pitch to Setzer. The score's nice, too. Ran in on him. Now it's a hitter's count. Now he's sitting dead red heater right here. You gotta be. That trademark one batting glove for Hayden Setzer. 3-1. A uh, big swing from Setzer, but can't connect, and the count runs full. Well, he pulled the string on him right there. He broke out the changeup, 3-1, knowing full well that he was sitting fastball. 3-2 pitch to Setzer. Here it is. Outside, ball four, and Setzer is aboard. How about that to come back? So all four Disco Turkeys to come up to the plate so far have reached base safely. Tubbs on a walk, Farrell on a single, Austin St. Laurent on an infield single, and Hayden Setzer just drawing the walk just now. So it'll bring up Logan Conklin, whose batting average is sky high right now. He had a really good day at the dish yesterday too. Had that big double in the first inning. First pitch to him. Hefty swing, but he can't connect. Oh, on he didn't miss that by much. And the back pick to first, not in time to get Setzer. That was a sneaky little back pick, though. Interesting to see what Setzer can do on the base pass today. Not the speediest guy one way or the other, especially coming off injury. Oh, one inside corner. Looked like it was a bit farther in than it apparently was, and the count's 0-2. Yeah, I agree with you there, but uh, credit to Bartley to frame that thing. Henry Kohler on deck. Dane Stewart set up to go behind him. In the dirt, ball one. Setzer was a little jumpy over there on first base. Might have thrown McGonagall off a little bit. I like it. I like that really, really aggressive secondary lead from a guy, as you said, that's not known for his speed. And that's exactly what it did. It threw McGonagall off. Setzer's big 6-3 frame taking his lead over there at first. He gets a big jump, and McGonagall will step off. I like that I from Setzer. I love that. I love that. That's smart. It's a 1-2 count. Here's the pitch. Conklin skies that one into center. Settling underneath it is Guy. He'll make the catch for out number two. Oh boy, Logan didn't miss that by much. If he squares that up a little bit more, doesn't get quite under it as much. That's going a long way. And so it'll bring up Henry Kohler. One of the best bats in this Carolina lineup so far this season. He made his first appearance on the mound yesterday. Was one for one yesterday, or excuse me, one for two with a single and a ground out. And he'll take that first pitch for ball one. Kohler from Davidson College. Throw back to Setzer at first, not in time. That's keeping him honest over there, especially with what he's been trying to do. One zero, Kohler swings on it, fouls it off. Good hack, one zero right there. I love that aggressiveness. 
He so. took the key to the game to heart right there. He got a pitch in his happy zone and let it rip. So did Kicks Farrell with his RBI single. Earlier in this half inning, Setzer takes a jump over there at first, 1-1, one, one, and Kohler will watch it skip into home plate. It's 2-1. It's a good take right there from Hayden, or excuse me, Kohler. Swing and miss from Kohler, but the ball gets away from Bartley, so Setzer will take a turn around second. And the count's now 2-2. Two and two. Good swing, but... I think you'll take that trade off. You'll take the strike for the advance of the runner in the scoring position now. For a guy that knows pretty well how to drive in runs. But Been it's doing a, it all year. Yep, it's a 2-2 two -two count with two outs, though. 2-2. Two -two. Grounded to the right side. It'll be picked up by Starbuck. And the throw to first in time for out number three. But Carolina with a pretty good start to this one. They get across two. And that is the only score up on the board as we head to the second. It is 2-0 Carolina here in Winston. We're here for the top of the second inning. Carolina has jumped out to a 2-0 lead courtesy of an RBI single from Kicks Farrell and a good display of base running between him and his left side of the infield partner, Austin St. Laurent. St. Laurent getting caught in a pickle between first and second and Kicks taking the opportunity to advance all the way home from third base. The first pitch from Chase Jesse in the inning. Misses the zone just a little bit. He gets behind 1-0. To the fifth man in the Monarch order, it's Isaiah Hairston, the first baseman. The bigger power bats in their lineup. And Hairston will check his swing. Wisely so, it missed the zone 2-0. It's a tempting pitch to a power bat. Oh, it really is. He'll line that one back up the middle, and that's a good piece of hitting from Hairston. It's the first hit of the day for the Monarchs, and Hairston's aboard with a leadoff single. Yeah, loud noises right there. Ahead in the count, 2-0. Wasted no time. Didn't sit back on that one at all. Took it right back where it came from, right back through the box. So it'll bring up Eli Willen, the third baseman. He started the first game between these two teams, but did not play in the second contest. Banks Starbuck took over third base duties for him. In his only game against the Disco Turkeys this year, he was one for four, but the one hit he had came in that crucial ninth inning. And it started things off. He was the leadoff man in that ninth inning. First pitch he sees from Jesse is called strike one. Hairston leaning back towards the bag at first. Jesse will just finish his pitch as Hairston, excuse me, Willen called time at the plate. I don't hate that. I don't hate finishing the pitch right there. Oh, it's absolutely what you should do every time that happens. Yep. Alejandro Rodriguez, the man of the hour, Last weekend for Greensboro on deck. He plays the designated hitter spot tonight. This afternoon, I should say. Oh, one. And Jesse got him with the heater. It's 0 2. 
Whew. I don't think he liked that late time call. Felt that breeze from here. Way behind on the fastball. Same thing we saw from Larry McMillian. See if Jesse goes back to the well again. Why wouldn't you? Oh, two. He does, but it's low for ball one. And he was trying to spot that down on the way and paint it. Just missed his spot. And if you find that corner, it's basically an unhittable exactly. hit. Exactly. And that's exactly pitch, what he was trying say. to do. With the velocity he's got on it. Yeah, 92, 93, down on the way, lefty on lefty. That's, that's tough. One and two. Breaking ball gets away from Ezell, and Harrison's going to make his way to second. The count goes to two and two. Yeah, a little bit too over the top of that curveball. So it's a wild pitch for Chase Jesse. Two and two. The count to Willen. Here it is. Called strike three. Got the outside corner that time, and it's out number one. He found it that time. Beautiful fastball, outer half, right on the black. Painted it, and that is unhittable. You've just got to tip your cap at the plate right there. So to bring up Alejandro Rodriguez, who is a disco turkey killer, so to speak, last weekend. Went 0 for 4, excuse me, 0 for 2 in the game on Sunday. Had two RBI sack flies. He's got a runner in scoring position now with one out. First pitch from Jesse to Rodriguez is a bit farther inside than the home plate umpire liked, and it's 1-0. I like the spot, though. Especially first pitch, run that fastball in. 1-0. Got the outside corner that time, and the count evens up. There you go. Pounded the edges right there. He, he busts him in, first pitch, can't get the call. Next pitch goes the opposite way, away, and that time he's able to paint it first strike. Count even at one and one, two number one. Here it is, and he checks his swing. He did go around, won't even appeal. The count's no one and to. two. No need to. That was a three-quarter swing right there. You can see Austin St. Laurent sheath the sword at shortstop <laughs> after that pitch. Good job from Chase Jesse on the mound. This is a team that has really gelled together as the season's gone along. And that's important, especially at this level. The friendships have been fostered and it's shown on the field. Here's the one-two, line foul right side into the netting. It'll stay one and two. And that's the goal, right, is for not only for these guys to get reps, but it's to develop friendships that they'll keep uh, not only this summer but beyond it. And when they go back to their respective colleges, they'll stay in touch. That's the fun thing about all of this. One-two from Chase Jesse. Swung on and missed for strike three, and Jesse is dealing. That's his third K of the game. Filthy. Absolutely filthy. I mean, that's, that's just, that's almost unfair. The over-the-top break with that thing. Sheesh. So Greensboro is, with two outs, in danger of getting nothing done with the runner in scoring position they were gifted on the wild pitch. It's Banks Starbuck, and Jesse will step off and take a look back at Isaiah Hairston at second base. Both guys having fun with it over there. First pitch to Starbuck. Outside corner, good spot from Jesse, called strike one. Great spot right there, especially left on left. Now you set up to go in and try and jam him. 0-1, same spot, same result, called strike two. Now you've really set up to go inside, or if he's not seeing that well, why not go back to the well a third time? Fastball has been clicking for Jesse today. He's got it. He's pounding the zone. And he's got a chance to get out of the inning here. 0-2, oh, two, two outs, runner on second. Pitch to Starbuck. Off oh, speed. Oh, my goodness, he got him. Jesse strikes out the side, and we'll go to the bottom of the second. Not much more to say other than just what a day so far from Chase Jesse. Nasty. He gives up the first hit of the ball game. To Isaiah Hairston, the leadoff man in the inning, but then he strikes out the side. One, two, three. Following that, we'll go to the bottom of the second. Carolina still up 2 nothing.
We're back here for the bottom of the second inning. Carolina still holding on to a 2-0 lead. And it'll be 7-8-9 due up for the Disco Turkeys in this half inning. It's Dane Stewart, Christian Ezell, and Nick Macadon. As Patty McGonigal is back on the mound after stranding. Hayden Setzer on second to end the first. First pitch to Dane Stewart. Spikes its way into home plate. It's 1-0. and up. See if Dane can keep this good offensive mojo going. Hit a big RBI last night. And it brought the Disco Turkeys within one, but Boone jumped all over the Carolina bullpen after that, and it just went downhill from there. 30th pitch from McGonigal is swung on and missed. A good way from Stewart, but it's one and one. Yeah, really good swing. Just pulled off of it a bit, though. One one pitch. Here it is. Another swing and a miss from Stewart, and he's behind one and two now. Stewart from Wake Forest. You can hear Kirk Cabana saying, make your adjustment. One, two, skied right side, but it's going to get out of play. Count will stay one and two. I think he made the adjustment. He was definitely on that ball, and we've heard Stewart make a lot of loud contact. When he hits the ball, it's loud. It's just a matter of getting the bat to the ball. Here's the one, two. Good job by Stewart to foul that one off, stay alive, still one and two. You said it really good job to fight that thing off. Look at Kirk with the bare hand. That's a tough pitch to fight off in a 1-2 count. That good off speed on the inside half. Oh, yeah, for sure. Didn't quite get a barrel to it, but. You don't really have to at that point. You just gotta, now you're alive. See another one. 1-2. One, Here it is. And Stewart will wave on that one. It gets away from Bartley. The throw on to first on target for out number one. And that's what can happen when you get into battle swing mode like that. You start getting the mindset that you have to swing at everything. Exactly. And, doesn't end up paying off some of the time. But a good job by Stewart to work that pitch count up. Six pitch A-B. And it's out number one. It'll bring up Christian Ezell. Seen really good at bats all across the board so far. Ezell earning a second consecutive start at the catcher position. And he'll pop that one up. It goes straight back. Strike one. You see him kind of nodding along right there. He knows that's one. He should turn around. Oh, one the count, the pitch from McGonigal. Kicks up some dust, and it's one and one. Good take right there. For a guy with the power that we know he has. One and one. Ezell offered it that one, but it's one and two now. Yeah, it was the right pitch selection on the mound. One, one change up. Pulled the string and had him out in front. One, two, count to Ezell. Here it is. Swung on and missed on a ball that didn't even make it to the plate. And he'll just jog his way to first. The throw, not on target from Ooh. Bartley, but a good job by Harrison to pick it out of the dirt. If Ezell hustled a little bit more, he might have made it safe, but it's out number two. Yeah, and, you know, from Christian's perspective, I, you, you can't be too upset with that. You like the swings, you like the approach. Just pulled that, the string on him a couple of times, he got him to chase. And that last pitch is one that he'll definitely want to have back. It's Nick Macadon, the number nine hitter, and he'll watch the first pitch in there for a called strike one. This next pitch will be number 40 from McGonigal. Dion Tubbs, the leadoff man on deck. Here's the 0-1 to Macadon. And he will go around the appeal. Yep, he, he did yep. go around. We could tell from up here oh, that's yeah. strike two. Well, I tell you, that curveball. McGonagall's got it working right now. I mean, he's pulling it out of the bag and then some, and he has got Carolina hitters flailing this half inning. Count 0-2 with two outs to Macadon. Here it is. Driven left side. Picked up by Willen. The throw to first in time. Three up, three down goes Carolina, but the lead is still two. Top of the third right after this.
Looking for an opportunity to promote your local business? Contact us today to become a sponsor of the Carolina Disco Turkeys. Opportunities start at just $100 per season. So to learn more, message sponsorships at discoturkeys.com. That's sponsorships at discoturkeys.com. We'll bring you back to Truist Stadium where it's the top of the third inning now. And Chase Jesse back on the mound, earning the start for Carolina today. Disco Turkey's going down in order in the bottom of the second inning. Three up, three down. But the leadoff man, Dion Tubbs, will be due up when we start the bottom of the third. And for Greensboro, it's the number nine hitter, Devin Tonkins. He squares to bunt, first pitch. And he pulled back. It's ball one. I don't hate that idea, especially from the nine-hole hitter. 1-0. He squares to bunt again. He went around that time. It's one and one. I'd be surprised. I mean, shocked if he squares around again here. Oh, I would too. Jesse struck out the side last inning. He's got four Ks on the day so far through two innings. One and one. That one will bounce its way into home plate. Two and one now. Good block by Ezel. Nobody on, so it doesn't really matter, but still like to see it from still, still build off of it. Yeah. Two one. That one will bounce again, and Ezel's having to put in some work behind the dish. It's three and one. A couple of breaking balls down and in right there that as big of a breaking ball as we know Chase Jesse has, that's the flip side of the coin right there is when it, when it starts low enough that then it breaks too much. Three one. Inside corner called strike two. Good pitch to get back in the count. There's that fastball again. Need to get back in the count. He knows what to go to. 3-2. And that one's inside again. Ezel having to reach all over the place in that plate appearance. And it's a walk for Devin Tonkins. The lineup card will flip back over to the top. Not ideal. But uh, guy grounded out to second his first time. So Jesse can get a ground ball out of him. And that would be wise and helpful. Double play ball. The pair up the middle today is St. Laurent and Conklin. Farrell at third, sets her at first. First pitch, two guy is fouled back. Strike one. The way to get in the head, of, head in the count, come right after him. Top of the order for Greensboro. Did not seem to adjust very well to the fastball when they came up last time. See if anything changes here. A one. Another fastball, but it's high and away for ball one. That'll be a bit of a de facto pitch out right there because you saw Ezel fake and look down to first. Well, I think that was more of a result of the fact that the pitch got away, but you'll take it either way. And in an 0 1 count, you can afford that. Right. One one pitch from Jesse. Off and running is Tonkins. It ran in on Guy. The throw to second is high, and that. Will be a stolen base for Devin Tonkins, but dangerous throw there from Ezel. That's about the third time in the last two days that we've seen a throw down to second get away from him in the upwards direction. That was a great job by Conklin, though, to sky the ladder, or climb the ladder, I should say, and sky up to snag that one out of midair. That gets into center field as far back middle depth as Dion was playing. I mean, it might not just be third base for a guy with Tonkin speed. So it's a 2-1 count to Justin Guy, runner on second. It gets away from Ezel. Tonkins is often running for third, and Ezel can't get to the ball after it takes a funky hop off the backstop. And Guy is ahead in the count, 3-1, and one, and there's now a runner on third with nobody out. Less than ideal now. And again, Ezel might have had a play if that bounced more to his way, but it took a pretty he hefty it took bounce. A, it took a funky carom in the opposite direction of where he wanted it to go. Count three one to Justin Guy at the plate. Big pitch from Jesse. Here it is. Big swing and a miss from Guy. It will make the count full. And that's a big boost right there to get him to chase that fastball up and in. Now you can open the weaponry box. Full count, nobody out, runner on third. This is a big spot for Chase Jesse with the top of the order up. 
for Greensboro. 3-2. Swung on and missed strike three. That's one down and two more to go for Chase Jesse. Great stuff right there. If not once, but twice. He goes inside with the fastball, gets him to chase. All right, let's do it again. This time it was more of a strike, and it's foul tipped into the mid of Ezel, who does a good job to hang on to it. And that's strikeout number five Already. for Chase Jesse. Only ten batters faced, half of them going down on strike. Squaring to bunt is Larry McMillian. That one looked like it should have been called strike say, one. It looked like a strike. S haven't seen a call yet, a convincing one at least. We're going to go with 1-0. and oh. One out, runner on third is Tompkins. McMillian struck out his last time up. He squares to bunt again, and he'll miss that time, and it's one and one. Important right there to even the count. It looks like it's a bit of a safety squeeze that's going on. And the sign will almost certainly not be waved off here. No, I would think not. Farrell playing normal position, now creeping up. Charging in, the bunt is popped up to the right side, but foul, and it'll be strike two. And now, with two strikes, it should come off, because remember, if he bunts it foul again, it's an automatic strikeout. Isaiah Rem on deck. He walked in the first, was the lone base runner in that half inning. Got stranded on first base after Bartley, who's in the hole, grounded out to the third baseman, kicks Farrell. One, two. Swung on and missed, and McMillian has sat down on strikes for the second time already. It's K number six for Chase Jesse through two and two-thirds. That curveball confused him so much at the plate, he about walked over to the first base dugout. Chase Jesse has got that curveball working to a T thus far. I mean, it is just nasty right now. Jesse had 16 strikeouts on the year coming into the day, and with that one, he's up to 22. That one is high. First pitch to Rem, and Kohler makes the catch in left for out number three. So a runner on third ends up being stranded there. Three consecutive outs, two of them big Ks from Chase Jesse, and we'll go to the bottom of the third. The lead still 2-0 for Carolina. We're back here in the bottom of the third after a pretty competitive game of musical chairs between Levi, Patrick, and Boogie. Eh, Boogie wasn't as competitive as I think he would have liked to be, but... Speaking of not competitive, Tubbs watches that first pitch in for a called strike one. 
Then he'll rip that one to second into the glove of Starbuck and on to first for out number one. I think he heard you. Solid at, contact. At this point, I'm used to seeing Tubbs swinging at the first pitch no matter what. That is very true. That is very true. That is a fair point. So Tubbs will have to wait at least one more plate appearance to try to continue his hitting streak, which has gotten up to seven games now. It's the longest by any individual player on the team over any stretch of consecutive games this year. Took until the ninth inning last night to extend it, but did nonetheless. That one is behind Kicks Farrell <laughs> for ball one. I think he thought it hit him. Now you can see him make a little motion with his hand like, uh, wait a minute. But he's heading the count 1-0. Farrell had that big RBI single up the middle to score Deion Tubbs in the first inning. You almost want to give St. Laurent credit with an RBI for the right. run scored by Farrell, but by rule, you can't. That one ran even farther in. Yep. And they have warnings to two both benches. Warnings. I'm honestly surprised that McMillian didn't get tossed after that yeah. one. Yeah. And Farrell is Farrell's incensed. Hot. He should be. And he's got to he's got to keep his cool because he's a really key player for Carolina, especially today. I mean, he should be. I this mean, yeah, he's got to keep his cool, but he's understandably upset with that. I mean, that can't happen. And it was clearly intentional, or else the second pitch wouldn't have been there, right? I mean, I don't want to, you know, put words in people's mouths here, but what the first pitch is behind him. The second pitch gets him in the back. I mean, what more do you read into it there, Graham? And there's nothing particularly, like, visible. Exactly. That has been, that has that's been, been done by exactly. kicks. A anything that has been done by Farrell to upset Greensboro has been verbal because you, you haven't seen anything from body language that has upset the Disco Turkeys, or the Monarchs, either way. So it'll be one-on-one -on -one out for Austin St. Laurent. And this could be interesting because St. Laurent was very, very physical in his motion to get Farrell to go home after he got caught in a pickle between first and second. And while you'd never want to cheer for something like that, would not be surprised to see Mc McGonagall go in on St. Laurent but the first pitch to him is over the plate, and it's a swing and a miss for strike one. Well, there he goes came that. Right theory. after him. Yep. <laughs> Hayden sets her on deck. St. Laurent, one for one on the day. Throw that out the window. They got Farrell. Uh -oh. Just go. Go, Farrell. He's in it safe second. Oh, my in goodness. In it safe. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it, you, you heard me. Just go. They, they weren't going to throw to him. No. He was already over halfway there. He had him beat. That'll rub a little salt in the wound. Oh, Kicks Farrell is a national treasure. It's becoming a fan favorite. Oh, one to St. Laurent. Good off speed, 0-2. Yeah, buckled him right there. Haven't seen that in a while. McGonagall has gone to the fastball a lot today. Unsurprisingly, the middle infielder is playing close to Farrell at second. That one's in the dirt, ball one to St. Laurent. Good take right there, 0-2. That's a good waste pitch on the mound as well. That was the second set, excuse me, the second stolen base of the day for Kicks Farrell. Still here in the third inning. One and two. Outside corner called strike three. It's a good pitch, one too close to look at, and it's two outs in the inning. Yeah, absolutely painted at that time. Fooled St. Laurent, and he knows it too. Now it's going to be up to big number eight. And it's the third strikeout of the day on the mound for McGonagall. They'll bring up big, excuse me, big Hayden Setzer. He's looking for his fourth hit of the year in his fifth game, and he fouls that one off 0-1. He came close to getting it right there. Good hack. 50 pitches now for McGonagall. They're just two and two-thirds, too. So really good ABs all the way around. Chase Jesse up to 45 pitches on the mound for Carolina. He's left one runner stranded in each of the first three innings and is through three scoreless. That's important to note. 0-1 to Hayden sets at the count. The pitch down and in, ball one. 
Good take. There's no way you can get the bat head around to that pitch when it's down and that far in. He tried to he right there. He went around on that one. It was in the dirt, and it's strike two. Yeah, same pitch right there. You can see he was trying to pull his hands in far enough to turn on that. Setzer was left stranded on second to end the first, and he is at risk of stranding Farrell on second to end the third. One, two, two outs. Conklin on deck. Here's the pitch. Good hold. Very good take from Setzer, two and two. Big spot here for McGonigal. And here's the pitch. Off speed, ran in on Setzer, 3-2 count. Did a lot better that time to stay disciplined and lay off that. Three two pitch. Fastball, a little bit low. It got away wow. from McGonagall, and it's a walk issued to Hayden Setzer. Second time he's been given a base on balls today. And it'll be two runners on for Logan Conklin. I mean, to miss as much time as he has and come back and see the ball well enough, not only to take back-to-back -back walks, to, but to spin on a pitch like that? It's impressive, to say the least. And it'll bring up Logan Conklin, who flew out to center in the first inning, but he has been putting very solid contact on the ball all week long. He's been squaring it up. Let's see if he can keep it going right here. Two-out rally for Carolina, perhaps. He'll watch that one. It's a called strike one. Good pitch there from McGonigal. A really good pitch out or half. Oh, one. Good swing offered by Conklin, but it's foul. And into the Greensboro dugout, it looked like it hit Jeremiah faster. Yeah, he's way, he's stretching out that right arm. I think it caught him. But Faster's not in the game. He came as into of pitch yet. last time. He did, and he had, a, here. he had a very good, uh, I believe he was I actually he was, the he starter. Started. Yeah, that's right. After Griffin McNeil was listed as the starter and then did not start, he had a good shot. 0-2, oh, fouled off by Conklin. Good job to tick that one back. Those last two pitches are ones I think Logan's going to want back because both were hanging, breaking balls. But the important thing is he's still hanging up there. Yep. And he's working that pitch count as well. Greensboro's dugout looking a little bit more full than we've gotten used to. 0-2 pitch. Lined into right, and that one is going to drop. Farrell's rounding third, heading for home. Sets her to third. The throw is going to get cut off, and it's 3-0 Carolina. Great two-strike, two-out hitting right there. Logan Coughlin inside outs that thing the other way, finds a hole. Absolutely fantastic situational two-strike, two-out hitting. Something this team certainly needs to get going, and Logan Conklin just the guy to jumpstart that. Great piece of hitting, especially with two strikes from Logan Conklin, and it's an RBI single. He'll move Setzer from first to third and kicks Farrell all the way into score. Second time he's come to touch home plate today, and it'll bring up Henry Kohler. First pitch to him is high and away, ball one. Hey, if Henry could find a gap here, Logan's got pretty good speed, so he can score from first if one gets deep enough into the gap. 1-0. Down to Kohler, and it looks like McGonigal's a bit shaken up now. Dane Stewart on deck. Kohler grounded out to second base to end the first inning. After one run came in to score. Excuse me, two in that half inning. 2-0. Off speed. Didn't even come close to the zone, and Kohler's ahead 3-0. Think green light here, two outs? No way. Nah, Not when I you agree. can load the nope. bases for Dane Stewart. Exactly. Not up 3-0 either. Here it is. Green light. He did have it. It's high into center. Into the triangle. And calling off everybody else is the left fielder Tonkins for out number three. But another run across for Carolina. And it's 3-0 Disco Turkeys as we go to the fourth.
We're back here at Truist Stadium, home of the Disco Turkeys and home of Dash City Independence Celebration here on July 3rd in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And the Disco Turkeys of Carolina hold a 3-0 lead going into the top of the fourth inning. They've won the first third of the ball game pretty handily. Going into the fourth, 12 batters faced, four chase Jesse, six Ks, and only one hit. And there is still, still a tremendous crowd filing in, aside from the one that's already made its way in. First pitch to the cleanup man, Devin Bartley, is fouled off, and the count goes to 0-1. And there's a reason he's hitting in the cleanup spot. He is far and away the best hitter in this lineup. He's 0-1 for 1 today. And he gets behind 0-2 in this count. Good job by Ezel to pick that one up out of the good dirt. Good job by Chase Jesse, too, to see that he was pretty much on the fastball. Right away goes to breaking ball and gets him out in front of it. 0-2 pitch. That one will bounce its way in, and it's 1-2. Good waste pitch. This Carolina lineup has been doing phenomenal so far today. Three runs on three hits. Both teams have stranded three. Carolina had only stranded one until this past half inning. One, two. Lined in the center, loud contact, but Tubbs got a good read on it. He'll drop to one knee and make the catch for out number one. You said it right there, really good read. Hard hit, but a loud out number one. Dion got a really good read, as you said. Started in a little bit and then just kind of stayed in his tracks. Saw that one all the way. Tough to do in a mid-afternoon sun field like we're in now. And Tubbs is playing pretty deep out there in center field for the middle of this lineup as Isaiah Hairston, who has the lone hit for Greensboro so far, comes to the plate. And whenever you see an outfielder come in with their first step, it always scares you a little bit as Hairston grounds this one to Conklin at second. The throw to Setzer in time for out number two. That's good range over there by Conklin, who, as we've said, is not a traditional second baseman, but... And when he's played over there, he sure as heck has looked like one, I'm telling you. And that's pitch number 50 for Jesse on the mound in a very efficient start so far. Something that was definitely needed. Nolan Fernandez had a pretty good start last night against Boone. but then Very good start. When the Disco Turkeys had to turn to the bullpen, that's where the wheels fell off. They'll bring in Eli Willen, who's 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Backwards K for the first out in the second inning. And comes up with two outs. First pitch he sees is a good off speed, but the front door breaking ball couldn't quite get back in. It's one and up. Oh. Nah, I didn't miss by much. I like the idea with that front door curveball, though, as you said. Here's the 1-0. Way to change speed on him. It's in there, called strike one. And that's something Chase Jesse has done a really, really good job of thus far is mixing his pitches and changing speeds and changing eye levels, too. Picture perfect so far. Here's the 1-1. Down and in, two and one now. Good pitch, though. Good spot down and in, left on left. That's a jam sandwich waiting to happen. It's a 2-1 count to the Monarch third baseman. And here's the pitch. Lined into center again, but Tubbs got a great read on it, and it's retired for out number three. So the Monarchs go down quietly, and in order at that, we'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Score still. 3-0 Carolina.
Truist Stadium back here. Graham Tuck with Brett Wiseman beside me. The first event of five today at Dash City Independence Celebration here at Truist Stadium. Three great live music acts to follow this at 6.30 is when it begins. And then City of Winston-Salem fireworks show at 9.30 to close out the evening. Should be a whole lot of fun, but the Disco Turkeys are having fun right now. And the first pitch to Dane Stewart as he leads off an inning for the second time today is a called strike one. And Colin Kennedy has made his way into the crowd to lead a Let's Go Turkeys chant. Stewart swings and misses on one that was in the dirt, and Bartley looks a bit shaken up. He'll shake it off behind the plate. Stewart's behind 0-2. It's about the third time that we've seen him swing and miss on a ball that was not even close to the zone. Yeah, got to be a little bit more disciplined up there. And, and when you get in a slump like he's been in lately, uh, sort of a slump, he that's somewhat kinda... broke out of it against Boone last night with an right. RBI, but that two was RBI a big RBI it was a big two that. RBI single. But other than that, he hasn't been phenomenal at the plate as of late. And when you get in a slump like that, it can kind of derail your approach at the plate as you try to put the bat on everything. And that's what we saw right there, and it gets him behind 0-2. Good job to lay off of that one. A There's bit the more plate discipline. discipline. There's the plate discipline right there. It's a 1-2 count. Stewart struck out his first time up. Here's a 1-2. Swing and a miss, strike three, and that's the second time that Stewart has been retired on strikes in this one. Second time swinging as well, so if there's any consolation, it's that he at least he's swinging the bat. In the second inning, the Disco Turkeys went down in order, one, two, three. It started with Stewart striking out. Ezel subsequently struck out after him, and in steps Ezel. See if he can break that streak. As mentioned, 0 for 1 today. First pitch he sees is high for ball one. And Graham, there are still folks filing in here to Truist Stadium. And so we figured that would be the case with all of the events going on here post-game. And this is the most buzzing we've seen Truist Stadium for a Disco Turkeys game all year. That's a great off-speed pitch from McGonigal, and it's in there for a called strike one. He's up to 70 now in the pitch count. Perfectly located, too. 1-1, one, one. off-speed. Missed just a bit. It's 2-1. Good take, though. Change-up didn't go exactly where you wanted it to. Macadon is on deck. Deion Tubbs set up behind him. Here's the 2-1. High and away. Good job by Ezell to lay off of that one. It's 3-1. and one. A couple of really strong takes. And back -back a guy that, as Ezell's a guy that really likes swinging at pitches high in the zone. He can get a hold of one, send it a long way. But that's ball four. Four good takes from Ezell, and he's the first base runner in the inning for Carolina. Yeah, none of those pitches missed by much either, so that shows you how well Christian see in the baseball. See if that'll get the bottom of the order rolling here. It's the fourth walk issued today by McGonigal. Four walks, one hit by pitch, three hits. I'll bring up Nick McAdon. First pitch to him, inside corner called strike one. Good bounce back pitch right there from McGonigal. Jeremiah Foster is warming up. The ball gets away from Harrison at first, but Mac, excuse me, Ezell will stand up at first. He's safe. And I think he's going to call time right here. And yeah, it looked a little bit shaken, shaken up. up. I'll try to walk it off. Ezell was part of a rough collision on Tuesday of this week against the Locos in Thomasville after he was trying to steal second base. He slid into second and collided with the Loco shortstop. He was a bit shaken up, but good to see him back. Just something to keep an eye on. The 0-1 pitch is in the dirt to Macadon, and the count will even up. Macadon was recently voted the pitcher of the year at the midseason point by the game day staff here at the Disco Turkeys. And he's a pretty good bat and glove in the field as well. Had a, his second triple of the year last night. 1-1. One, one. 
Good take. Back pick to Ezel at first. He'll get in pretty easily. He'll slide back, though. Count two and one to Macadon. And pops back up pretty easily at that. He's a catcher, man. Catchers are some of the toughest people on planet Earth. 76 pitches now for McGonigal. He faces off against Macadon, the DH, and nine hitter. 2 1. Oh, way up and in. Oh, he gave him a little stare down right there, too. <laughs> and McGonigal's got to be careful. He's yep. already been issued a warning. Because if he hits somebody else, he's gone. Time's going to be called. And McGonagall was not on the roster when the Monarchs played the Disco Turkeys the first two times last weekend. So he's a new ad. Here's the 3-1. Swing and a miss, or a foul tip, I should say, off the glove of Bartley, who's taken a bit of a beating behind the plate so far today, but the count runs full. Speaking of tough catchers, and Bartley is as tough as they come. I mean, the, th the three times we've seen him, he has taken, as you said, Quite a bit of a beating back there, but... And Bartley, if you have to pick one, is one of my favorite players that we've seen Carolina oh, yeah. play against so no far No doubt about it. He's, he's, he's number he, one. He's a really likable guy. He's a great player at that. NCANT product. Here's the 3-2. In on Macadon. And it's ball four. And Macadon's going to let him hear it. And now our home plate umpire is going to come out and at least try and calm things down a bit. So chew on that for a second as... Yeah, let that simmer. You know that that storyline is brewing. And at the same time, keep in mind, the Disco Turkeys have just one out, two on, and the top of the lineup due up. And also keep in mind that a warning was issued, so the next batter hit on either side of the Or larger. potentially even ran in on. Yeah. Or thrown behind And that's an umpire's discretion. So bring up Tubbs. He's 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored. And a stolen base at that. First pitch to him is high for ball one. Tubbs trying to extend that hitting streak to eight games. One and up. He'll take it outside, two and up. 81 pitches now for McGonigal. As you said, faster warming up in the bullpen and that clock might speed up. Foster, excuse me. 2-0 to Tubbs. Good off speed. Doesn't get back in the zone, though. It's 3-0. Didn't miss by much. Pretty good pitch right there. Good 12-6 break on it. And Foster is warming up a bit more attentively now. Yep, that clock is moving ever more quickly. 3-0 to Tubbs. High ball four. Third consecutive base on balls issued by McGonigal, and that's going to draw out the head coach for Greensboro. And that might be it. We'll see if Foster's warm. If not, the Monarchs head coach will at least try to buy some time. And Greensboro was in trouble. They desperately need a double play ball. But at the same time, Carolina desperately needs to extend this lead. Love the dugout getting involved, getting the fans involved with the chant. Third walk of the inning issued by McGonigal, and it's number seven overall. Excuse me, six. He's also plunked one batter. And the guy he did plunk is up right now, kicks Farrell. And I tell you, these storylines write themselves. I was getting ready to say, the plot just thickened even more, didn't it? And Kirk Cabana is going to take a trip to the dugout for Carolina. And I'm sure he's got something to say to his guys about staying cool-headed. Yep. And as these guys have started to take a liking to each other, the more defensive they get about their own exactly. players, and that's why we see stuff like this starting to happen that we didn't see in the first part of the year. First pitch to Farrell. And there it is. Him. He's gone. I don't know why you do that with the bases loaded. Exactly. That is... Simp simply put, that is stupid and half baseball. The dug half the dugout just came out, And too. a hard 90 from Kicks. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. That's, that's, just an, that's an excusable. 
And you said it. That's just not smart baseball. On top, you just let her run in. What's the point? Well, it will keep Farrell's perfect on base percentage alive. He's one for one on the day. He's been hit by two different pitches. And, and he gets an RBI on it. And each of the last three times that McGonigal has thrown a pitch to kick Farrell, it has either hit him or been behind him. And that was after the single, too. Well, the score is 4 nothing Carolina now. After Ezell scores on the RBI hit by pitch from Kix Farrell. It's his second RBI of the day. That was a great job by Kix, too, because half the dugout came out in his defense, and he immediately started pushing them back. As, so. as did A.J. Lewis, as yep. did Kurt Cabana. Uh, A.J. Lewis came out immediately. And that's going to do it for McGonigal. And all of the... And all the storylines that we just talked about, we failed to mention that McGonagall's gone. So final line for McGonagall, four earned runs, and again, three and a third. Sorry, Graham. Again, there's nothing from kicks, like, definitively that we could tell that precipitated that. But something had to have happened after he hit the single in the first. Because all three pitches that followed, the first behind him, the second hit him, and then that time, the second pitch that ended up hitting him was when the warning was issued. Then he came in on Macadon for the walk. He walks Tubbs, and then, no hesitation, the first pitch right at the back of Kicks Farrell. It, it, it boggles your mind because, one, the bases were loaded, so you just conceded a run for no, for basically no point, right? That's just not smart baseball. On top of it being inexcusable to do something like that. Well, you know what they say, hating's a disease, and it's put McGonagall in the infirmary. <laughs> and he's on the hook for all three base runners that are out there right now for Greensboro. He's already got four runs up against him in this contest. There's one out here in the fourth. All of which are earned, by the way. Both teams clean defensively so far. And, and besides the fact that it's a stupid play, it's not a baseball play. No. And it's a very selfish play. It's very, very selfish. Because you put your team in a situation where you're taking out a personal vendetta right. on a player for the opposing team. Number one, it brings in a run automatically. Number two, you put the guy you that now comes behind to, you in an even worse spot. You now have to face the three, four, five with, with the bases only, loaded. With bases loaded, only one out, already down by four. It it on every level, it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Uh, unless there is something that happened that we completely missed. Something might have been said by Farrell, and I'll be honest, no one kicks. It's not out of the question. Yeah. But uh, kicks is normally a pretty Level-headed guy. Even yeah. keel is the way to he put it. He has fun. He plays He plays the game with energy and passion. And that's the number one thing that you like to see. Now, if it boiled over, we don't know. There's no way for us to know because we're not down there. But there's nothing that we saw definitively that would have any reason for McGonagall to come after him not once but twice. Well, three times, technically. How do you come after a guy and miss him? It's very Bull Durham-esque. So, and, and back to the fact of the matter being that it was a selfish play. McGonagall walked the bases loaded all by himself, the third of which All the was wounds on four of which pitches. are self-inflicted. Right. He walked the bases loaded. The third one was four pitches. And then... Normally, when you when you walk the bases loaded like that, when you get a walk issued at any point as a pitcher, your job is to pick up your teammates after you've let them down. Exactly. And McGonagall did the exact opposite. So a terrible display of sportsmanship results in a run scored for Carolina. The bases are still loaded. McAdon is on third, Tubbs on second, and Farrell on first. Austin St. Laurent is up at the plate as Jeremiah Foster is just about done with his warm-up. Hayden Setzer is on deck should Austin St. Laurent avoid the double play. So 
So McGonigal, three and a third, 20 batters faced, three hits, no errors, four strikeouts, two hit by pitches, and six walks. Four runs all earned as we stand, but Austin St. Laurent may have something to say about that. And Foster's going to take a trip out to second base as both umpires are still having a conversation with Kurt Cabana and the head coach for Greensboro. And you can still see on the left side of your screen, Cabana is still... He's still pretty hot. Uh, I'm not so sure that it's hot at this point. He's just... He's, he's, he's pretty demonstrative something. with his... He, he really yeah. is. And, and one thing that I would be upset about if I was Carolina, McGonagall's still in the dugout for Greensboro. Yeah, he's been ejected from the ball game. He's so he not should, allowed to be in the dugout. He's not allowed to be in the dugout. And that might be part of the discussion. And it looks like there may be some other parties involved that might have to get him out of the stadium. The head coach for Greensboro has retreated to the dugout. Foster's going to keep warming up. As he should. And th this is... None of this is on Greensboro as a team, in my estimation, and I'm sure you agree. It's all on McGonagall. Yeah, I, this does not seem like a team action. No, not by any stretch. And you could see McGonagall kind of trying to shake it off there, but... Okay, the first pitch of the previous at-bat is what tipped your hand. Well, that's over. Let's move on. So it'll bring up Austin St. Laurent. Base is loaded, one out. Carolina up by four here in the fourth inning. Something to note, this game has a hard stop set at 6 o'clock due to the events set to follow. And the first pitch to St. Laurent. And the first pitch from Foster is ball one. The throwback from Bartley got away. But McAdon didn't have a great secondary over at third. Well, and it not was able a great job by Banks Starbuck at second to back that up and cut that off. Because as you said, it is a live ball. And that's in the zone called strike one to St. Laurent. Swing and a miss on that one from Austin, and he's behind one and two. Big hack right there. Trying to replicate what he did on uh, Tuesday. Hit a big home run against the Locos to lead off what was the sixth inning. One, two. Grounds it, and that's a single. This is going to score at least one. Dion is being waved around. The throw from left is online, and they got around it. Dion Tubbs with a phenomenal slide, and off and running to third. Farrell got off the bag. That's going to be out number two, but St. Lorenz running to second. The throw, not in time. What is happening? Dion ran through the stop sign, slid underneath the tag, Bartley didn't like the call. It was close, but it looked like he got under it. And then Kicks Farrell noticed that, ran towards third, and then Austin St. Laurent behind that ends up at second base. And it's a two RBI single for Austin St. Laurent. I, I don't even know how to score it. Please help me. <laughs> and and kick, credit Kicks Farrell with running around, distracting Eli Willen at third base off the base paths and allowing St. Laurent to advance all the way to second. So Macadon scores, Tubbs scores, Farrell's out at third, and St. Laurent safe at second. And he'll bring in Hayden Setzer. He takes the first pitch for a called strike one. Oh gosh, this is the most fun we've had calling a game oh, for Carolina all year. Oh, I love it. That one's a bit low. Good pitch, though, from Foster. It's one and one. One and one. In the opposite batter's box, it's two and one now. Setzer has been walked twice already. Stranded on second in the first and third in the third. Two one. Swing and a miss. A good swing from Setzer. He's got a very unique swing. He does. It's very much uppercut. But we've seen it work for him. Yeah. In the first game in the history of this ball club. 
tanked one. Two, two, two outs. In the dirt, St. Laurent wisely staying at second. That one might have been a back pick from Bartley, but it's cut off by Foster. Oh, it might have been. It might have very well been going to second. Good catch. 3-2. Swung on and missed for strike three and out number three. But a very eventful half inning will go to the top of the fifth. Carolina scratches across two more off of a big two RBI single from Austin St. Laurent. And it's 6-0 Disco Turkeys. We're back here in the top of the fifth inning where tempers have flared in Winston-Salem, but it's Carolina who's getting the best of Greensboro right now. They hold a six-run lead. It's 6 nothing Disco Turkeys as we go to the bottom three in the order for Greensboro. Chase Jesse back on the mound, and the first pitch to Alejandro Rodriguez gets away from him. It's 1-0. The starting pitcher for Greensboro, if you missed it, Patty McGonigal was tossed after intentionally hitting Kicks Farrell. There's no other way about it. It was clearly, clearly intentional. There's no other reason that you hit a batter that you've already hit once. That you already, the, the first pitch to him was behind him, mind you, so. And with the bases loaded and only one out. So it's a 2 0, excuse me, 2-1 count. It's 3-0 it's a, on the scoreboard, but it is indeed 2-1. To Alejandro Rodriguez, the designated hitter for the Monarchs. Good pitch from Jesse. It's to the left side. The pick and the throw. What a play from St. Louis. Oh, my goodness. Do you believe it? Ranging to his right, he picks it up on the backhand, throws across his body, Derek Jeter style, in time to get Alejandro Rodriguez out at first. That's video game stuff. That's MLB the show stuff, Austin. Stop it. Human beings aren't supposed to make that play. They'll bring up Banks Starbuck. 0 for 1 with a strikeout so far. That first pitch from Jesse will miss for ball one. And Jesse was more fired up than anybody after that great play from Austin. As he should have been. 1-0. Catches the high and outside corner. It's 1-1. One one. 60 pitches now for Jesse. And I am hanging a star on that play in my scorebook. 2-0. Fouled off. Loud contact, but strike two. Here's the pitch. 
Fouled off again by Starbuck, and the count will stay one and two. Devin Tonkins is on deck. Greensboro with only one hit so far. One, two. Off speed. Oh, my goodness. How do you not ring him up on that? Where does that miss? Count goes to two and two after a good off speed. And here's the two, two in the dirt. Ball three. Well, that's a lot of times what happens when you don't get a call that you and everybody in the ballpark know should go your way. You lose the next one just a little bit. Three, two. Outside corner called strike three. It's K number seven for Chase Jesse. Bank Starbuck not happy with the call, but the umpire seemed to have corrected himself right there. That was the same pit, the same spot that the breaky ball missed 2 2, but he got the call right that time, right on the outside corner. Fastball, absolutely Picasso painted for strike three. So it'll bring in Tonkins with two outs who. Walked his last time up and only time up so far. Called strike one at the top of the zone. High heat from Chase Jesse. The Disco Turkeys have got their largest crowd of the year to date. Out in full force, and they're putting on a show for them. Here's the 0-1. And there are still folks filing into the ballpark. That one missed down and in to Tonkins. And it'll even the count at one. Here's the pitch. What an off-speed pitch from Chase Jesse. That, that's, that's almost unfair when it breaks like that and is spotted as perfectly as it was right there. And let me tell you, when Chase Jesse throws strikes, there ain't much that anybody can do about it. And there's strike number three. It's the eighth strikeout of the day for Chase Jesse. Two times through the lineup now for Greensboro. Only one hit, and we go to the bottom of the fifth. Carolina absolutely rolling right now. They're up by six and a chance to extend that lead when we come back. We're back here for the bottom of the fifth. And Carolina's Logan Conklin is starting things off. It's a 1-1 count to Conklin. Here in the bottom of the fifth, it is Five, six, seven, do up, and Conklin the five. Bobbled by Rem at short, but the throw still in time to get him at first, out number one. And a good recovery that time from Rem. And Disco Turkey number one super fan, Kerry Skipworth leading the crowd in a Disco Turkeys chant. 
and not satisfied until one side is just as loud as the other one. First pitch to Henry Kohler. It'll miss, ball one. And as any smart fan would do, stops the chant when the at-bat begins and the pitches go. Another miss towards Kohler. It's 2-0 and now. Big cut there from Kohler. Good job to go after that one on a 2-0 count, but it's 2-1 and one now. Yeah, hack and a half right there, but I, I'd like to see it. Really good stuff. Kohler's made solid contact every time up. He's got a ground out and a fly out to his name. Watches that one skip in for ball three. Kohler part of a bottom four in the order that does not have a hit yet. That one will bounce in. It's ball four, and Kohler's aboard with one out. First time he's reached base this afternoon. So it'll bring in Dane Stewart, who is the only disco turkey in the starting lineup that does not have a trip on base yet. Good time to change that. One on one out. He struck out twice. He puts it in play. This could be two. Rem on to Starbuck and Stewart. He'll beat it out. Safe at first, but it's two outs in the inning. Oh, he's on base. He put the ball in play. Two very important things right there. So with one out, excuse me, with two outs, It'll bring up Christian Ezel, who's 0 for 1 with a strikeout and a walk. He was part of that string of walks and hit by pitch in the fourth inning that brought him into score. First pitch to him is outside for ball one. Ezel was the first runner on base in that fourth inning. He walked and then advanced all the way around to score without a ball being put in play. One up. Lifted high into the air, foul territory, ranging over to his right and foul ground, and Hairston can't get to it out of the frame. It's strike one. Over the netting and into the fifth, sixth row up here behind the first base side where seems like most of the crowd is congregated today, but it's pretty spread out too. This ballpark is pretty full. I tease it on social media, come and pack it to the brim. It's pretty close too right here. Biggest crowd we've seen yet this year. And they're out in full force supporting their Disco Turkeys. And they hold a six-run lead. One to one. And the dirt. Good job by Bartley to keep that in front of him. He'll throw on to second, even though Stewart was already on his way back to first. The count's two and one. Yeah, it's a bit of an odd decision. but Honestly, he might have been trying to get it back to Foster, but who knows? That's true. I had a little too much velo on it to just go back to the pitcher, though. Two one. Skips it in again, does Foster, and it's three and one. In danger of walking his second in the inning now. Big cut from Ezel and the hitter's count, and it runs full. Yep, you said it. That's a 3-1 swing right there. So Stewart should be running on the pitch. Macadon is on deck, who's 0 for 1 with a walk, a run scored, and a ground out. 3-2. Left side, picked up by Willen, on to first, out number three. So the Disco Turkey's not able to get any more in the fifth, but their advantage is still large. It's 6-0 as we head to the sixth.
We're back here to start the sixth inning. And Carolina, in an eventful contest, holds a six-run lead. It's six to nothing. Over the Greensboro Monarchs, Chase Jesse still on the mound, the starter for Carolina. And the guys are out there having a lot of fun. You can see Austin St. Laurent dancing at his shortstop position. First pitch from Jesse to start the sixth is to the leadoff man, Justin Guy. And it's in there for a call, excuse me, ball one, I should say. Didn't miss by much, though. That one is ball two. That one missed by a larger a margin. Up over 70 pitches now, but into the sixth. That is right in the sweet spot of where you want to be. Officially the pitcher of record on line for the win. That one is lifted by Guy. Shallow center. Conklin will wave everyone off and make the catch for out number one. Really good communication right there from everybody involved, especially Logan Conklin. Had the best view of it. Called everybody off. Makes the right play. And it's a three-pitch out to start the sixth. That's the 14th consecutive plate appearance by Greensboro without a hit against Chase Jesse. They just can't solve the lefty. First pitch to McMillian. Ran in on him. What a spot from Chase Jesse. Oh Called goodness. strike one. That's unhittable. There's no way to get around on that thing. Oh, one. Inside corner again. Called strike two. And McMillian, who's struck out twice already, is in danger of falling victim to the K for the third time. It would be number nine for Chase Jesse on the day. No two. In the dirt, good waste pitch, one and two. Man, he went for the knockout pitch right there. Man, if he got McMillian to offer it, that one in the dirt and swing and miss on it, my goodness, this place would have erupted. One, two now, here it is. Ooh. Line to the right side. Best contact we've seen McMillian put on a baseball all day, but it's still one and two. Hard slash the other way right there. That's the first time McMillian's fouled off anything. Here's the one two. Called strike three, and it's K number nine for Chase Jesse. K number nine for number nine. And he hands McMillian the silver sombrero with his third strikeout of the ball game. One short of the golden sombrero. So it'll bring up Isaiah Rem, who's 0 for 1 on the day. Two full times through the lineup now. Still just one hit for Greensboro. That one's up on Isaiah Rem. Don't believe that one to be intentional, no, but it's ball not one. At all. Rem is only one of three who have reached base at all for Greensboro so far. That one's lined back up the middle. Jesse can't get to it. St. Laurent spinning a throw, and it got away from him. And into the dugout. Well, I'll applaud the effort. And he does push up by second. I love this kid. So with two outs, Isaiah Rem. That was almost certainly... An infield single and then a throwing error. I hate to charge it to you, Austin, but it is what it is. So it's the first error made by either team, and it's the first hit allowed by Chase Jesse since Isaiah Hairston to lead off the second inning. Three full innings without a hit allowed. Make it four, excuse me. Four and two-thirds of an inning hitless for Greensboro. Uh -oh. That one's high. It's deep. Left field, it's gone. Wow. That'll get you back into the ball game. So Greensboro not going quietly. It'll clear the bases with two outs. And the score is now 6-2. to two. And if there's one guy in this lineup that can get you going real quick with a bomb like that, it's number 12. We've seen it time and time again from him. So it's a two-run shot from Devin Bartley with two outs, and that error from St. Laurent proving costly. 
would have been a heck of a play to get Rem at first one way or the other. But he had a bit of a play and didn't capitalize on it. Jesse misses for ball one. And this is a big spot for Jesse. you got to get out of this inning. You cannot allow any further damage with two outs. Yep, and hopefully get those two runs back in the bottom half. There you go. Called strike one. Good job from Jesse to rebound. And there is a Disco Turkey stretching in the bullpen. Don't have a number yet. One and one. Swung on and missed by Hairston, and he's behind one and two. Lefty on lefty crime right there. On deck is Eli Willen, who's 0 for 2. Hairston himself is 1 for 2. Put the ball in play both times. 1-2, two, two outs. Fouled off left side. It'll stay 1 and 2. The two-strike hitting right there to fight that one off. This will be pitch number 85 from Chase Jesse. In the bullpen for Carolina as a swing and a miss. Strike three, and Jesse gets number 10 on the day. But that might be it. And Greensboro gets on the board for the first time, courtesy of a two-run shot from Devin Bartley with two outs. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Carolina still leading by a wide margin, but it's been trimmed by a third. It's 6-2, to two, Disco Turkeys. We're back here for the bottom of the sixth inning. Carolina has allowed a run. Finally, it is six to two. Devin Bartley with a two-run shot in the top of the sixth. But Macadon leading things off in the sixth for Carolina. First pitch fouls it off. It's 0-1. Jeremiah Foster back out on the mound after coming in relief of the starter for Greensboro. Patty McGonigal was ejected after hitting kicks Farrell for the second time. Here's the 0-1. Fouled off by Macadon again. It's 0-2. Harrison Lewis was the disco turkey that is stretching in the bullpen and getting set to warm up. And if that's it for Chase Jesse, man, what a day. Ten strikeouts through six innings. 0-2. High into left center. Converging on it is Guy, and he'll make the catch. About five feet from the warning track for out number one. Yeah, man, Nick did not miss that one by much. You know you're seeing it well when you can drive one out that deep and get to the couple steps from the warning track. Carolina on the day, six runs on four hits. And for Greensboro, two runs on three hits, two of which came in the last half inning. Lineup card will flip over for the fourth time. It's Deion Tubbs who will foul off the first pitch. Chase Lockler has joined Harrison Lewis in the bullpen for Carolina as Deion Tubbs, very good take. It'll even the count at one and one. Over 30 pitches now for Jeremiah Foster. And Chase Lockler looks to be the one catching Harrison Lewis, but as we saw on Tuesday with uh, Brian Coleman, that can change.
Line to the right. And oh, Boogie, Boogie whiffed it. Come on. Boogie, who's coaching first base this half inning, is not able to pick that one up. That was a hot shot from Deion Tubbs. I can't say I blame him. That's an EB. That's an E-Boogie. <laughs> and Tubbs is 0 for 1 today. He's walked twice, scored two runs. Has one stolen base to his credit. Here's Boogie. the 1-2. That one's high into right center. Guy settling under it, and he'll make the catch again, this time out number two. The boogie got back in the ready position. He is not going to allow himself to get two errors if we know boogie. So to bring up kicks, Farrell, as Colin Kennedy, Scout Nichols, and DJ Musser have made their way into the crowd here. They'll bring up Kicks Farrell, who is one for one with a hit. And two hit. <laughs> two times being plunked. He scored two runs. Brought into. Pretty good day for the Disco Turkey Third. They're baseman. going to assist uh, Kerry Skipworth in the old Disco Turkeys chant. The one, excuse me, no one count to kicks Farrell at the plate. Austin St. Laurent is on deck. A one. That one's down in the zone. It's one and one. Good take. That one is a very good take. It's two and one to Farrell now. one swung on left side willen will pick it up on the long hop throw on to first for out number three so the disco turkeys go down in order but they still hold on to a four run lead it's six to two carolina heading to the seventh
We're back here to start the seventh inning at Truist Stadium. Graham Tuck with Brett Wiseman beside me. It is a done day for Chase Jesse. Six innings, 23 faced, 10 strikeouts, two walks, 85 pitches, and two runs on three hits. And until that last half inning for Greensboro, they only had one. But a single and a home run from Devin Bartley have made this game a little bit more competitive. It is now a 6-2 ball game, and it's Harrison Lewis stepping in for the Disco Turkeys in one appearance, two and a third, two earned runs, five Ks, one walk, and four hits. First appearance came a week ago today against the Boone Bigfoots. That first pitch didn't miss by a whole lot. It really didn't. The first pitch is to the third baseman, Eli Willen. And it was ball one. 1-0, uh -oh. lined deep right center, but Stewart is going to make the catch for out number one. Well, I thought he got a lot more of that than he ended up getting. Deepest part of the ballpark, too, fortunately for Carolina. It's the first time Stewart has had to do really anything out there in right field. But he stands strong and makes the catch. The ball will find you. The batter's Alejandro Rodriguez stepping in, and Lewis will spike that one to him. It's 1-0. and As we mentioned, Chase Lockler also getting loose a little bit earlier for Carolina. See if he makes an appearance at some point. 1-0. That one got away from Lewis. It'll hit off the shoe of our home plate umpire, a little bit of shoe shine, and it's 2-0. That one's high, it misses ball three, and Lewis is behind. We'll have to work all the way back. It starts right here, 3-0. And that misses by a wide margin, and it is a walk with one out. Issued to Alejandro Rodriguez, first time he's gotten on base today. Not how you want to come back after getting the first out, but... Uh... Harris is more than capable of getting the ground ball. And that'll certainly be what he's looking for here. As Banks Starbuck comes in, he's 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Rodriguez on first. First pitch. There you go. Good job by Lewis to come back. And I knew he could do it. 0 and 1. A good spot right there, outer half with a fastball, perfectly placed. They get ahead in the count right there. Oh, one. High and outside. Ball one. I like the velo I'm seeing so far from him, though. One and one's the count. Here's the pitch. High and outside again. Missed in the same spot. It's two and one. In the same spot, same result right there. Devin Tonkins is on deck. He's 0 for 1 today. Two one count. Here's the pitch. High and outside again, three and one. And Chase Lockler is now making his way back out to the bullpen. And stretching and throwing. Four consecutive misses high and away. And it is the second consecutive walk issued by Harrison Lewis. Lockler stretching and throwing with Cameron Keim, the Greensboro College grad student, as A.J. Lewis will make a visit to the mound to Harrison Lewis. So... Alejandro Rodriguez stands safe at second. Banks Starbuck on base for the first time on first base. There's one out here, top of the seventh inning. The Disco Turkeys and Greensboro Monarchs. It is a four-run lead for Carolina. 
Carolina out hitting Greensboro four to three. Six to two is the score. And Carolina, one error in the field compared to just a clean day all around from Greensboro defensively. Missing in the same spot for the fifth consecutive pitch is Lewis. And it's one and up. Devin Tonkins has already walked once. Got the ball down that time. Couldn't get back in towards the plate. It's 2-0. That was a better spot, though. And I'll tell you what. If he walks Tonkins, uh, his day is probably done. Yep. 2-0. There you go. There Call it strike is. one. It'll make the count 2-1 and one now. That way to come back right there. He saw a better delivery that time, too. A little bit more straight. 2-1 count. Here it is. Good spot again. One, excuse me, two and two. He seems to have found the sweet spot with his delivery right there. It's more straight and towards the plate as opposed to where he was over the top with those last six, seven pitches. Two, two, lifted foul by Tonkins, and the count will stay the same. This would be a big punch out here for Lewis. You know he's a strikeout pitcher. Yep. Struck out five in his last outing through two and a third. 2-2. Two, two. Got him. Foul tipped into the glove of Ezel, and it's a big out number two. And a big time fastball at that. Up and in. Jam sandwich. So it's the second K for Tonkins in his third trip to the plate. So it will bring up the leadoff man, Justin Guy, for the fourth time. He is 0-4-3. A ground out, a strike out, and a pop out. That one didn't miss by a whole lot. It's 1-0. and I got like the good spot right there. Just a smidge below the knees. Greensboro has struck out 11 times today. 1-0. That one into right center. And Stewart will make the play easily for out number three. So Greensboro causes a little bit of trouble, but a good job by Harrison Lewis to get himself out of it. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning, and after the seventh inning stretch, Carolina will have another chance to extend their lead. Hey, Ostentation Nation, visit the Foul Territory Team Store today in order to grab all your favorite Carolina Disco Turkeys merchandise to show your team spirit. You can visit the team store at Truist Stadium during our next home game or at discoturkeys.com. We'll bring you back here to Truist Stadium for the bottom of the seventh inning. Austin St. Laurent will start things for Carolina, 3-4-5 due up. First pitch he sees taken for strike one. On the subject of the team store, I feel it's worth reminding that jerseys and on-field player hats are available for pre-order. Yeah, it's a good selection. Some decal stickers available as well. $10 for a pack of four, and they're pretty nice looking, I must say. They are very nice looking. I've got one, a few on my laptop and my car. Limited selection of pride shirts available as well. Fourth of July merchandise available. Won't ship in time for tomorrow, but... 
If you come out to Truist Stadium, you can find yourself one, I believe. 0-2. Oh, wow, that one looked inside, but it's called strike three. It's a good pitch, but it didn't look like a strike. So a three-pitch strikeout for Austin St. Laurent. And it will bring up the cleanup man, Hayden Setzer. See if he can get his first knock here of the ball game. It's the second time in this game that St. Laurent has struck out looking. The other two times he's gotten singles. It's a called strike one to Setzer. And Foster has pitched pretty well coming out of the bullpen. That one's grounded to the right side. This is going to be a tough play. Fielded by the first baseman and not in time. That's going to oh, get no. away. And tripped up with Setzer at first. And Foster's shaken up. He took the worst of that collision. And for a guy like Hayden that just came off injury, that is not a sight that Kirk Cabana and that coaching staff wants to see. But it looks like he's up and okay. And uh, Foster also appears to be no worse for wear. So it is an infield single for Hayden Setzer. First base hit for him since returning from injury, number four on the year. He drew his sixth walk of the season, sixth and seventh, I should say, earlier in this contest. So it'll bring up Logan Conklin with one on and one out. Conklin today, one for three. Good take from Conklin, but it's on the outside corner. Better pitch. One and up. And of note, Alejandro Rodriguez is catching somebody warming up in the bullpen for Greensboro as Conklin swings and misses on strike two. Yeah, maybe pressing a little bit after that call on the OO. -O. That one bounces its way in and We've been updated. It is not Harrison Lewis that's on the mound. It's Zach Lewis, a new ad for Carolina. Harrison Lewis had pitched last weekend. 1-2 to Conklin. Did he go around? No, he didn't. It's 2-2. Good discipline to hold up right there. I'll be honest. I thought that was a lot closer than our home plate umpire apparently did. Yep. I did too. Setzer's off and running. Conklin will hold, and Setzer won't draw a throw. He's safe at second, so with one out, the Disco Turkeys have a runner in scoring position. And that takes a double play out of the equation, at least for the moment. It's a full count to Logan Conklin. That one is lined deep into right field, but foul. In the bullpen for Greensboro is number 15, Trey Cooper. And we don't know it could be Rodriguez that ends up coming in. Cooper's the one on the mound as of right now, but both of those guys are pitchers, so it really could go either way. Ball four to Conklin, and that is a very good display of discipline by number six. Absolutely. Well, the good news for Greensboro on that aspect of it is the double play is in order. And it'll bring up Henry Kohler, who is 0 for 2 today. He has reached base on a walk. He's grounded out and flown out. And he swings and misses on that one for strike one. Good hack right there, though. A quick turn and look back at Hayden Setzer, who won't go all the way back to second base. 50 pitches now for Foster. Dane Stewart on deck. Henry will watch that one bounce in. It's one and one. Good take right there. Pretty uncharacteristic of Carolina is the fact that we're into the seventh inning and we haven't seen any subs. One and one. Kohler lines that one sharp to the right side, but it'll slice foul. And that one is one that Kohler would like to straighten out just a little bit. Because yeah. if he puts that one down the line, it's at least one run, possibly two. It didn't miss the line by much. Just a couple of feet to the right of the line. But, yeah, if that gets in the corner, it might score two. Setzer's off and running for third. The hit and run was on. Good call. Nice play, coach. So a good call from Cabana to put the hit and run on after that missed opportunity on the foul ball and a better play to jump up and grab the foul. 
Coach with the verts. It's 1-2 with one out. Two on. Setzer on second. Conklin on first. Kohler at the plate. He's hitless so far. 1-2. Outside, 2-2. Two two. Another really good take right there from Setzer. Guy who likes the lefty that likes to go the other way. A little bit too far outside. 2-2 two, two to Kohler. We'll have to wait as another look back at second base to keep Setzer there. Dane Stewart on deck. And Jeff Davis juggling at the dugout steps. Lined by Kohler to the right side. On to second for one, but Kohler's going to beat it out at first. A quick turn and fake back to third by Rem. So Kohler grounds into the fielder's choice that advances Setzer to third. Conklin's out at second for out number two. And so it's runners on the corners with two outs and Dane Stewart in his biggest spot of the day. Good hustle right there from Kohler. And now you got a chance to not necessarily put this completely away, but put another, put another dent in this. First pitch outside, ball one. Kind of hammer the nail ever so close to being completely shut. And both Stewart and the guy behind him are two guys that can hit the ball a long way if they get a hold of it. And that was a power swing from Stewart right there. It's one and one. Yeah, he pressed square on that one. He wasn't going for the contact swing. He went for the downs. One and one. Good pitch from Foster. It's a called strike two. Really good pitch right there. And not much you can do with that on the, uh, at the plate. That one's in the dirt. Kohler will be in standing up at second base. So now with a 2-2 count, it's two runners in scoring position. Wouldn't even draw a throw. Really good jump from Kohler right there. And that's important now. As you said, two in scoring position with two down. That one gets away. Setzer's going to break for home. The throw, not in time. He's safe. It's 7-2 to Carolina. And Foster is incensed. We could tell from here that Setzer clearly... Oh, he clearly the, got under the tag. He didn't beat the ball, but he beat the tag. The ball beat Setzer to home plate, but the tag from Foster was not in time to get Setzer. The throw from Bartley was good. It was the tag that he not only beat, but got underneath. Great slide right there by Setzer. So it's seven to two. After Carolina and Hayden Setzer scores on the wild pitch. 60 pitches now for Foster and that one is costly. Kohler advances to third on the wild pitch. And it's a 3-2 count to Dane Stewart with two outs and a runner on third. Outside, ball four. Second time Dane has reached in two consecutive plate appearances. One was a fielder's choice and this one a walk. So it will bring up Christian Ezel, who on the day is 0 for 2. He has struck out, walked, and grounded out. Again, Carolina's lead is now five. It's seven to two, Disco Turkeys. Ezel at the plate. Here's the first pitch. Outside corner, call to strike one. Very good pitch. Yeah, good bounce back pitch right there from Foster on the mound. Nick Macadon is on deck, the nine hitter, who is also 0 for 2 today. 0 and 1. In the dirt, good job by Bartley to block it up. Really good job. You're, you got to love what that guy does behind the plate. Bartley plays the game the right way. He's a very talented player, both at the plate and defensively. And he's one of the toughest outs that this Disco Turkeys team has faced all year. Proved it earlier in the ball game in that two-run bomb. One and one. Stewart's running. Hit and run. Ezel not through. Willen on to first. It got high. Ezel is safe. Kohler will come in to score and being waved around from third as the throw got away as Dane Stewart, he's going to score two. It's 9-2 to two Carolina. Well, the throw pulled him off the bag and it looked like he got the tag down on him, but the ball popped out of the glove. So then he's L safe and now both runs score and that might be the nail on the coffin right there as unconventionally as it came across. The first unearned run scored by Carolina so far today and Christian Ezel 
What a gritty player he is. So you give him the one RBI on the infield single. And then the second RBI coming on the air. So to bring up Macadon, who is 0 for 2. First pitch he sees deep into right. Still going back. And on the warning track, making the catch is Larry McMillian. Oh, Nick didn't miss that by much. My he's goodness, what a long out number three. But Ezel reaching on the arrow will bring in two. And a three run bottom of the seventh makes it a nine to two ball game. Carolina on top. And they'll go to the top of the eighth right after this. Back here for the top of the eighth inning, and Carolina has broke this one open. It's a 9-2 ball game, largest lead of the day for the Disco Turkeys, and they face the 2-3-4 for Greensboro to start the eighth inning. And I apologize, I had credited Larry McMillian with that catch on the warning track to end the seventh, but it was not McMillian. It was his replacement, number 24, Cam Peters, who will stand in to take his first hacks. Zach Lewis on the mound for Carolina. Number 36 in white. And the first pitch to Peters is high for ball one. Saw him miss quite a few times in that last half ending up there. In the same spot. And Lockler and Kime both warming up for Carolina. 1-0 pitch. That's a better spot, but missed just a tad apparently. It is 2-0. Two zero pitch, high and away, ball three. So Lewis will have to work his way back into the count against Cam Peters. 3-0, outside corner, called strike one. Good pitch from Lewis that time. Very good comeback pitch. That's where he's been trying to go all A-B, finally caught that corner. 3-1. 
sailed over the Yikes. glove of Ezel, and Peters is going to jog at least halfway to first. It's a leadoff walk issued to the number two spot for Greensboro, and he's aboard with nobody out. And it'll bring up Isaiah Rem, who singled up the middle, and he broke a streak that was four and two-thirds consecutive innings for Greensboro without a hit, and then ended up coming to score on a big two-run shot from Devin Bartley. Who is in the hole, and they'd love to get to him to try and put a dent into this lead. And if Rem reaches safely, I can almost guarantee that Lewis's day is done because they do not want him to have to face Bartley with no outs, no nope. on. One up. Outside corner doesn't get the call, 2-0. Bartley's on deck, excuse me, I said it in the hole, but he is on deck. Setzer holding on Peters at first. Isaiah Rem at the plate. High and outside again, it's 3-0, again. Again, Carolina holding on to a seven-run lead. Greensboro's starter was ejected in the fourth. High and away. Again, ball four. And it's two on with nobody out for Greensboro. And A.J. Lewis now is going to make his way out to the mound. Greensboro has to score seven runs in the next six outs. But with a runner on first and second with nobody out in the top of the eighth. And this guy at the plate. They've started things off in the right direction. And the absolute right guy coming up. Cameron Keim is the primary pitcher warming up in the bullpen for Carolina. Lockler is getting some throws in, but he's mostly just catching up Cameron. Yeah, Lockler's going down to the crouch for most of it. So nine pitches in the inning for Lewis, eight of them missing for balls. It's a second mound visit now for A.J. Lewis. So the next one will have to result in a substitution, or a call of the bullpen, I should say. It'll bring up Devin Bartley, who went deep his last time up. First pitch he sees is high for ball one. I don't hate the spot right there up and in against a power bat. Try and get him to roll over something. One and up. Line to left. That's going to get down. That's going to score one. Going over is Stewart. Excuse me, Kohler. Being held up at third is Rem, and it is an RBI double for Devin Bartley. Well, the beat goes on for Devin Bartley. He does it yet again with the RBI double. It's a 9-3 to three ball game. Carolina's still in front, but there's two on with nobody out. Both in scoring position as well, and... Uh, Good job, though, by Kohler over there to cut that thing off in the corner and prevent two from scoring. So a three RBI day for Devin Bartley, and it might not be over yet. Two in scoring position, nobody out for Isaiah Hairston, who on the day is one for three, but 0 for his last two. First pitch, good off speed, but it misses just a hair. It's one and up. Yeah, I like the spot there with that off-speed pitch. 30 pitches now for Zach Lewis. Here's the 1-0. Didn't miss high that time, but it misses nonetheless. It's 2-0. and On deck is Eli Willen. 2-0 to Hairston. High and away. Good job by Ezel to catch that one on the fly and keep the play at the plate from being a risk, but it's 3-0. Yeah, good job right there to pop out of the crouch quickly and get a glove to that. 3-0, high and away, ball four. And here comes Kirk Cabana, and here comes Cameron Kime. So after getting out of the top of the seventh unscathed, a rough top of the eighth for Zach Lewis. Three walks issued. Three walks issued and an RBI double. 
and it'll bring on Cameron Kime. Well deserved round of applause for him though. From what is a fantastic crowd this afternoon here at Truist Stadium for Dash City Independence Day celebration. So we'll take a break as Kime warms up, excuse me, warms up, and we'll bring it back here. Still no outs, top of the eighth. There's a six-run lead for Carolina, and we're back right after this. Back here as Eli Willen steps in to the batter's box for the fourth time. It's a done day for Zach Lewis. One plus innings pitch, nine batters faced, one hit, five walks, and one strikeout on 34 pitches. And it's Cameron Kime stepping in now. He's tasked with the bases loaded and nobody out and a six-run lead. Here's the first pitch to Willen. It's high for ball one. Just got to get an out here wherever you can get it. With a six-run lead, you will certainly trade an out for a run. One out. Down and in, ball two. And the key in, in spots like this is just to throw strikes. Throw quality strikes and get out of it. Got to take the chance that a guy that's 0 for 3 isn't going to take you deep if you put one over the plate. Two out. Good pitch from Kime. Oh, did you see the backward movement on that thing? It's two and one. Broke back in towards the plate. Righty on lefty matchup. Cameron Kime, the righty. Good cutting action on that. Two one. Another called strike. This time it's the second one. A good two seam action on the two one. And right there, the straight four seam froze him right on the outside corner. And Chase Lockler now is loosening with Colin Kennedy in the bullpen. This would be a big punch out if Kime can get it. 2-2 two, two count. Nobody out. Here's the pitch. Popped up left side. It's going to get out of play. And a good two-strike swing right there to fight that thing off. The score here at Truist is 9-3. Carolina is up. Carolina 0-2 in meetings with the Monarchs this season. A chance to snap that streak as well as a six-game losing streak if they hold on to win. 2-2. Two, two. Wow, what a pitch. Ran inside on Willen just a little bit, and it'll make the count full. Yeah, just a little too far inside. Great spot, though. You give him a fastball up and away, and then you hammer him inside. I like the mentality. 3-2. And the pitch. Popped up again. This time it'll get out of play as well. Count staying full. Good battle here from Willen. 
This will be the eighth pitch of the at-bat coming up. Three, two. Right side fouled off again. Well, he is battling and then some right now. He is making Kime sweat out there. It's a 3 2 count. Nobody out. Base is loaded. The pitch. Line to the right side. That's going to score at least one. Coming in to score is Rem. Being waved around is Bartley, and he'll hold off at third. I spoke too soon. It's an RBI single for Eli Willen. Yeah, he got the stop sign at third, but no better time than the present for Eli Willen to get your first hit of the ball game, and it's an RBI knock at that. So the bases will remain loaded. Still nobody out. Isaiah Rem comes in to score. Bartley to third, and Isaiah Hairston to second. Remember, Zach Lewis responsible for Rem, who just came in to score, as well as Bartley and Hairston, who stand in scoring position with nobody out, for Alejandro Rodriguez, who was walked his last time. First pitch, high ball one. You got to find a way, any way, right here to get an out. one -oh pitch, here it is. Good spot from Kime. It's one and one. Really good spot outer half of that breaking ball. He's got a good one, that's for sure. One one. Called strike two on a pitch that just clipped the high and outside corner. Very good pitch that time from Kime. Excuse me, Kime, and it's one and two. In the dirt, ball two. It's lost in the feet of the home plate umpire, but Ezel will snag it, and the count moves to two and two. This would be a huge, huge strikeout if he can get it. A huge out, one way or the other. He got five runs to play with at this point. It's exactly. a nine to four ball game. And interestingly enough, on the line score, the hits are even at five five. Two two, high ball three. And Bartley will threaten, but stay at third. Wisely so. And for the second consecutive plate appearance, Greensboro has worked their way back from a 1-2 count to make it full. I think ESL wants a new catcher's mitt. And A.J. Lewis is asking among the dugout. Setzer's going to run out, and they'll retrieve one from the bullpen. That's the second straight ball that Conklin has lost control of. Ezel. Excuse me, Ezel. When I mean, he got as many good catches as this team has, you confuse him a couple of times. As we said, an embarrassment of riches. We haven't seen Trey Newman in a couple of days, but hasn't dressed. He is certainly in that fold for sure. It's a three two count to Rodriguez. With the bases loaded, nobody out. The pitch swung on it and missed on a ball up at the forehead. And it's out number one. Oh, that is absolutely huge to get him to chase that. Now a double play gets you completely out of this thing and a force at any base to play with. An uncharacteristically poor day at the plate for Alejandro Rodriguez. To say the least. One of the main cogs on the mound and at the plate and defensively for this ball club. That one is high, that one is deep, that one is foul. Wow, caught a break right there. It's a one run game if that gets out. And it was about, about 15 feet from being fair. And, and I'll venture to say that it was off frame from our camera, but I think that one might have been a ground rule double. Yeah, it looked like it landed on the warning track, but nonetheless, if that gets down, Starbuck got every bit of that two ball. still score. 0-1. Oh, yeah, a little bit more careful with that pitch right there. Yeah, he misses inside. It's 1-1. One one. The first pitch, he grooved him a fastball, and Starbuck was all over it. 
Here's the 1-1 one -one to Starbuck. Bases loaded, one out. Good pitch, called strike two. That's exactly where he tried to go with that 0-1. That time he's able to clip the corner and get the strike call. Seventeen pitches now for Kime. This will be eighteen. One two. Fouled off by Starbuck. Good job just to stay alive. Yeah, good two strike swing right there. Count stays one and two. Remind you, the Disco Turkeys wrap up their homestand tomorrow at 2 p.m. against the High Point Thomasville Locos. Looking for revenge after their loss on Tuesday. Here's the 1-2. Swung on and again, solid contact. This one a line drive. Again, fouled off to the right side. And thank goodness for the extended protective netting over there because that was a shot headed right for the seats. Still a 1-2 count to Starbuck, who is 0 for 2 on the day, struck out twice, and walked his last time up. Just one inning ago. Here's the 1-2. High and away, ball two. Not a bad waste pitch right there. After you got the previous batter to chase at that. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Popped him up. But it's going to get out of play. You can hear it hit off of the roofing here at Truist. And the count will stay 2-2 two two again. Roofing of the Flow Club. Which is open today for the first time. Fair amount of folks up there as well. Seats in right field also open. And some folks out there as well. 2-2 two -two pitch. And that one ran in on Starbuck. It's going to bring in a run. It is now 9-5, to five, Carolina. Well, that makes it ever more important how to get out of this because that Grand Slam ties the ball game. And we got a pinch hitter at the plate, it looks like, for Greensboro. And it's a power bat to do just what I talked about right there. Stepping in, it's going to be Brandon McMillian. He takes over for Devin Tonkins, who's 0 for 2 with 2 Ks. So it's an RBI hit by pitch for Starbuck. The first pitch to McMillian. Top part of the zone, called strike one. Good spot right there at the right at, right at the belt. The double play ball would end the inning. But you got to get to it first. Here's the 0-1. High ball one. A little bit higher up that time, but I like the idea with those first two pitches. One one, high for ball two. I'm busting him inside on two of those first three pitches of the AB. Got to bring it down a little bit though against a power bat like this. Two to one from Kime. High for ball three. Chase Lockler is no longer warming in the bullpen, but that may change. Three runs in the frame for the Monarchs. They came into this inning trailing 9-2, to and they've scratched across three, and they might not be done yet. 3-1, to one, one out, bases loaded. The pitch. High and in, ball four, run six. And it'll and bring out Kirk Cabana. Kirk. So it's an RBI walk for Brandon McMillian. And 
it'll be Nick Macadon, the DH, coming on in place of Austin St. Laurent, who makes his way to the mound. Oh, boy. This will be fun. St. Laurent has pitched this season. Back in Mooresville, where we saw one of the absolutely nastiest sliders you and I have ever seen with our own two eyes. He has two appearances on the year, one that game in Mooresville and one here this past Wednesday against the Locos when he came on for the save. So he has one save to his credit, an inning and two-thirds on the year, one hit allowed, no runs, three walks and two strikeouts. So it'll bring up Justin Guy, the only Monarch who has not come to the plate in this half inning. Greensboro has scored four in this half inning. And of those, only one came in on an RBI base hit. The other ones have been, I apologize, two came in on an RBI base hit, one from Eli Willen and one from that RBI double from Devin Bartley. But the last two runs that have come in from Greensboro have been courtesy of an RBI hit by pitch from Banks Starbuck, who stands on second, and an RBI walk from Brandon McMillian, who stands on first. In the inning, four walks for Greensboro and one hit by pitch. Five free bases is not how you win a ball game. So Macadon will come in at third from his designated hitter position. Farrell will transition over to short, and St. Laurent, after a brief warm-up, is ready to go. Hey, he don't need much time to get loose. So this has been a dismal inning for Carolina defensively, and it'll... Be Justin Guy tasked with keeping it going for Greensboro. The first pitch he sees is a heater fouled back for strike one. Bases loaded, one out. Again, a double play would end the inning. In, of note, it's 5.30 now. This game has a hard cap of six. Here's the 0-1. Fouled off again, it's 0-2. St. Laurent one pitch away from potentially getting out of this. Double play ball still in effect with one out. O2 from St. Laurent. Lifted into shallow center. Tubbs coming in. He's got it for out number two. Tagging and running home is Eli Willen, and the throw will get cut off. And it's a sack fly for Justin Guy and RBI. It is a 9-7 ball game. And the Monarchs have officially batted around. You can absolutely live with that, though. Still got a two-run lead, a chance to add on to the bottom half. But you get that ever-important second out. It will hold Starbuck and McMillian at second and first, respectively. And it'll bring up Cam Peters for the second time in this inning. He walked to start things off. First pitch. High ball one. One up. Broken bat, right side. Conklin will have to throw on to St. Laurent. PFP for out number three. So Carolina in the top of the eighth lets in five runs. But Austin St. Laurent, who is very, very happy with himself, as he should be, comes in and gets the last two outs. And it is a 9-7 to seven baseball game as we head to the bottom of the eighth. Carolina one more chance to extend their lead before the ninth.
We're here in the bottom of the eighth inning where the top of the lineup is up for Carolina. After that massive inning from Greensboro, a lot of it self-inflicted. Five rubs, excuse me, five runs up on the board for the Monarchs. The majority of them coming in from walk batters. And that pitch, the first one from Trey Cooper, is at the feet of Deion Tubbs for ball one. And Dion a little upset with the fact that nothing was done about it because after what happened earlier in this ball game, I can't really blame him. Nope. Not one bit. And Chase Lockler is up and loosening now in the Carolina bullpen. And that one misses 2-0 to Dion Subs. Kicks Farrell on deck. Austin St. Laurent in the hole behind him. That one ran in on Dion again. You see the look he gave? It's 3-0. Called strike one. Well. Good hack right there, 3-1. And after being behind 3-0, the count runs full. Tubbs still without a hit today. Possibly the last chance to change that. That one's in the dirt, ball four. And Tubbs will finally get that call. So the leadoff man is aboard. And Dion doing what he does so well. And after the way that plate appearance went, would be surprised if he's not looking to take advantage of the fact that he got on base. Oh, you know he is. And he led, led off the ball game with a walk. And a stolen base. And the first pitch, before the first pitch even left McGonigal's hand, he took off. But off a lefty, it might be a little bit tougher. Kicks Farrell at the plate. Throw back to Tubbs. You called it. Kicks Farrell on the day. One for two. Two runs scored. Two RBIs. A single. Two stolen bases. And two times being hit by a pitch. Grounded to third his last time up. Tubbs off and running. First pitch called strike one, but Tubbs is safe. He's got a second stolen base of the day. It's almost impossible to get that guy out. And when you get that good a jump on a left-handed pitcher and a catcher the caliber of Devin Bartley, you know you got some wheels over there. It's a no one count to Kicks Farrell with a runner in scoring position. Disco Turkey's up by two. Here's the pitch. Kicks holds off. Probably shouldn't have. It's a called strike two. Yeah. Saw the reaction right there from him. He kind of shook his head. That's one I think he wants to have back. That's a drivable pitch, 0-1. St. Laurent on deck. Deion Tubbs knew that Cooper was going to turn around and look at him. Got back in time without a throw. St. Laurent is two for four today. Two RBIs, two singles, two Ks. 0-2. Swing and a miss, strike three for Kicks Farrell, and for the first time today, he goes down on strikes. It's one out in the inning. That's a pretty good piece of pitching right there, though, to bust him in, prevent him from getting extended. So it'll bring up Austin St. Laurent hitting for himself now after coming in relief of Cameron Kime. At the moment, Chase Lockler was loosening. Deion Tubbs off and running for third. The throw high and away, and he's safe. Not even close. Deion Tubbs has stole second and third base, and the count is 1-0 and to St. Laurent. This dude is just a cheat code on the base pass. He cannot be stopped. It is Tubbs' third stolen base of the day. His season high for most in one game is four. Infield in, 1-0, fouled back. Good hack right there from number 12. The risk you run with the infield in is that the gaps are bigger with the middle infield having less space to play around. 
So anything through any of the holes in the infield is going to score a run. Fly ball would too. 1-1. One, one. St. Laurent squares to bunt. He'll pull back. It's ball two. That was a safety squeeze. And I love the idea with the speed of Tubbs. Well, here's the other thing. Now that you've shown it, what do you do? We'll see. Sets are on deck. 2-1 to St. Laurent. Outside, ball three. Yeah, definitely not squaring 3-1 now, I would think. With a hitter like St. Laurent. Exactly. You're not a chance. You're sitting on a you're sitting on a piece of cheese that you're ready to hack at. Three one. Swing and a miss, and he was aiming for the Powerball sign in left field. Uh, he might have been aiming beyond that. It's a full count with one out, and Tubbs on third. He tried to hit the apartment game. complex across the street. The flagpole, 3-2, fouled off. Really good two-strike swing right there. This has been a phenomenal game all the way around. Absolutely. Lots of storylines here. The return of Hayden Setzer, the ejection of Patty McGonigal, and the comeback from Greensboro. 3-2 to St. Laurent. He'll hold off ball four. Big walk for number 12 in white. And of note now, again, it's 541. The hard cap as a result of the festivities is 6 o'clock. And that, that is at least what we've been told. We don't we know don't if that's know if changed that's, since uh, the beginning of the game. Exactly. So if, we it have very to call well could as, have. As if, exactly. We have to call as if that's the case. Right. Because who that's knows? all we know to this point. So. Hayden Setzer stepping in. St. Laurent on first, Tubbs on third. First pitch, high, ball one. That'll be a good time for Setzer to get the power going and put this thing away. Setzer is one for two today. Strikeout, single, and two walks. Has scored a run, does have a stolen base. That one's very far in on Setzer. And the Monarchs getting a bit of a taste of their own medicine. Their bullpen unable to find the strike zone right now. As was Carolina's in the top half of the eighth. It's been a shootout here. Only 10 hits combined. St. Lorenz off and running. Setzer swings and misses. The throw faked a second. Good play there by Bartley. Really good play. Because I think if that throw went to second, Dion was going to take off of the plate. And he knows... Dion has stolen two bases on this trip around already. He knows the tendencies of Tubbs. The infield is in again. It's a 2-1 count to Hayden Setzer. This is pitch number 20 in the inning for Trey Cooper. Good off speed. It's 2-2. Two two. Great pitch right there. That breaking ball over the top. Two on, one out. Both in scoring position. 2-2. Two -two. Lifted into right. That one's going to drop. It's going to score two. Hayden Setzer with two RBIs. He's gunning for second. He's going to come in. He's rounding for third. Hayden Setzer, he's being waved down. A two RBI triple for Hayden Setzer in his return to the lineup. How about that for a comeback? And it's a 11 to 7 ball game. Number six. Unbelievable stuff from the guy that had done it every game he'd been in prior to, and he comes back and doesn't miss a beat and gets his crowd back alive and hopefully puts a nail in the coffin. Conklin up now. He takes the first pitch, ball one. Hayden Setzer with his fifth and sixth RBIs of the year extends the lead back to four for Carolina here in the eighth. It's the sixth hit of the day for the Disco Turkeys and a big one at that. Logan Conklin watches it up, ball two. Henry Kohler on deck. 2-0. Big cut from Conklin, and that one was a couple of inches away from being in the Foothills Beer Garden. 
It's two and one. Maybe on top of it over onto the concourse. Uh, you got to watch out, Logan. My car's out there. Minus two. Two one. And ball three. Sets are coming in, and it won't even be close. 12 to seven. Second time sets are scored on a wild pitch now. And that's another big time insurance marker right there. And as quickly as Greensboro got back into this game, it seems like they're out of it again. 12 to seven is the Carolina lead. Now hopefully for Carolina that, that five run lead will stick. As it was six before that last inning when Greensboro put up five. Actually, I believe the lead was seven, actually. The lead was seven. It was a nine to two ball game. Greensboro hung five. And now Carolina has come back to put three up and might not be done. Only one out, three one pitch to Conklin. That one's high into right, but doesn't have the depth. Settling underneath it is the right fielder, Cam Peters, and he'll make the catch for out number two. Oh, Henry Kohler more than capable of a two-out knock here. So a two outs in the bottom of the eighth. That's Henry Kohler, who on the day is 0 for 3. That one's foul. Very good contact from Kohler. Just missed it by a couple of inches. Not foul by much, and that's what he likes to do. He likes to slash that ball the other way down the left side. Kohler on the day, 0 for 3. Ground out, fly out, walk, and a fielder's choice. Does have a run scored today. And as a left-handed batter, hits lefties pretty well, too. And Setzer's double was also off a lefty from a left-handed batter. 0-1. Kohler again with a good piece of hitting. But it goes foul over the roof of the flow club, and it's an 0-2 count. Two really good cuts right there. And you can see where he's trying to go. He's trying to shoot that thing down a left field line. 0-2. Grounded weakly, swinging bunt. Bartley, bare hand, throw, picked out of the dirt by the first baseman. A very good play from Cam Peters, that is. Isaiah Hairston moved to right, and Cam Peters went to first. And it's out number three. But we go to the ninth. Carolina got three back courtesy of a big two-run triple from Hayden Setzer, and it's a 12-7 ball game, ninth inning when we come back. Back here, top of the ninth inning, Carolina holds a five-run lead after a three-run bottom of the eighth. It is 12-7 Disco Turkeys, and it's the 3-4-5 that Austin St. Laurent is tasked with for the final three outs. Isaiah Rem stepping in, and the first pitch he sees is lying down the left field line. It's going to drop for a base hit. Kohler cutting it off and Nicely. hold him to a single. So the first man is aboard for Greensboro. And the wheels on the locomotive are turning. 
It'll bring up Devin Bartley. Fitting uh, foreshadowing transition for our opponent tomorrow with that comment. And yeah, the Locos coming to town. Second time they've made the trip to Winston. Rem on first, Bartley at the plate. St. Laurent delivers, and it's high for ball one. Ezel couldn't find it. The throw to second to get Rem out of time. Well, now the plot thickens even more. This game, this game's got everything. Bartley, the last time Rem was on second, brought him in with a two-run shot. One up. Ooh, big cut. He was going for the same thing there again, and it's one and one. One one. Another big swing and a miss. How about Saint that Lorena's fastball? Got the fastball working. It's one and two. And I really hope we get to see the slider here. Oh yeah, please. I'm begging you, please throw it. Hits even six apiece. Carolina reads in the run department. 12-7. One error each. Time called at the plate. Rem was playing some mind games with St. Laurent out there at second base. St. Laurent is an infielder, knows how to prevent that a lot better than some other arms. One, two. Line to the left side. It's going to get through. Macadon couldn't get to it. Being waved around is Rem. He goes through the stop sign, I should say. Ezel won't be able to put the tag on him, and Bartley makes a turn at second. The throw back won't get him. And it is an RBI single for Devin Bartley. It is 12 to 8. Devin Bartley strikes again. There's no other way to put it. That guy is one heck of an RBI machine up there at the plate. It's his fourth of the day. That is 50% of the runs across the board driven in by just that one man. And that one's going to skip into Ezel. He can't get to it, and Bartley's safe at third. St. Laurent taking responsibility for it. That looked like a breaking ball. And Chase Lockler may be heading back out to the bullpen soon after all. one -0. Grounded to the right side, but foul. Good pitch on the end of the hands right there. It's a one-on-one one count. Should anyone come in in relief of St. Laurent, it would be a safe situation at this point in the ballgame. Haven't seen many of those this year. 1-1. One, one. Big cut from Hairston, but it's foul tip, strike two. Yeah, Bartley went halfway just in case, but you could hear it nick the bat of Hairston. Hairston transitioning from first base to right field defensively. Here's the one, two. Swung on and missed. Strike number three and out number one here in the ninth. Wait a minute. It was foul tip, but Ezel could not hold on to it. Oh, man, what a break. What a break. He obviously saw something I didn't. We'll do the one-two again. That one will bounce its way in. Bartley's coming in to score. Ezel lost track of it. It is 12-9. And now it does officially become a safe situation. And now AC Plum has stood up, grabbed a glove, and might be heading out to warm up. Still no outs here in the ninth. Three-run ball game. 12-9 to nine is the score. 2-2 two -two count, though, so a chance to get an out right here. That one's right side, but foul. Not by much. And that's extra bases if it stays fair. Just to the right of the first base bag.
And Scout Nichols, who was in the crowd with some fans, has now been summoned to the bullpen with A.C. Plum. It's a 2-2. Two -two. Swung on, right side. Conklin picks it up. Spin. He lost it. Would have been a tough play. But yeah, it's an E4. Would have been a tough play nonetheless, but if you feel that that's one, I think if you ask him, he knows he should make that throw and get it on the gather. So now the tying run is on deck, represented by Alejandro Rodriguez. Still no outs here in the ninth. Hairston on first, Eli Willen at the plate. So Scout Nichols is going to be the one throwing. A.C. Plum will catch him, it appears. First pitch, good off speed. There's that slider we talked about, 0-1. Oh, that looked more like a 12-6 curveball. Could be wrong, though. I was wrong on it being a slider for to begin with, so. Oh, one to Willen. Another good off speed inside corner this time, 0-2. Oh, First time St. Laurent has gotten ahead in a count, 0-2. Oh, How about we see it one more time? I think you got to change speeds on him here. Try to blow him away with the fastball. Yeah, I like that idea. Because you've already you've already sped up the bat a little bit. 0-2 oh, pitch. There it is. Called strike three. You called it, Brett. The off-speed gets him on three consecutive pitches, and it's out number one. All three looking. I mean, that's just filthy. St. Lorenz first strikeout. We knew he was going to break out that nasty breaking stuff at some point, and... That's as good as it gets right there. That's just disgusting. So the Monarchs as a team have struck out 12 times today. 10 of them courtesy of Chase Jesse. First pitch to Alejandro Rodriguez in there called strike one. I apologize, 14 times. 13 the Monarchs have struck out. 10 do belong to Chase Jesse. Great day for the starter. 0-1 oh, is swung on and missed. Called, excuse me, strike two in there. Yep, Ezel held on to the foul tip that time. And a double play ball would end it here. 0-2 oh, count, top nine. 12-9 to nine is the score. Carolina had the bats working for him today. 0-2. Oh, Off speed, just barely missed. Just a One little bit two. up. Just a little bit up. One, two. Fouled off, off of the leg of Rodriguez. A really good two-strike swing right there to fight that one off, though. Rodriguez on the day is 0 for 3 with two Ks, a ground out, and a walk. Looking for his first hit. He's played very well in this park so far. Flesh to Oak hitter. And time is called before the pitch from St. Laurent with a one-two count. So Rodriguez will step back in. Again, Isaiah Hairston on first after reaching on an air. Ram and Bartley have already come in to score off of two singles. One-two. Strike three called. Or was that... Yep. It was not very demonstrative. No, it wasn't even a ring up. It was just a point. I mean. But it's out number two one way or the other. Absolutely painted it. The crowd rang him up before the umpire did. And it'll be Bank Starbuck. And the head coach for Greensboro not too happy about it. As you talked about, we're coming up on that time cap. It is 5.58 here. So two minutes left until 6 o'clock. Which now is when one. we were told the game would have to end. Well, it's about to end right on time if St. Laurent can get it out. Starbuck at the plate. The tying run represented by Brandon McMillian on deck. Off speed. Good job by Ezel to get a glove to that. It's really good job by Ezel because then he got a guy in scoring position if that gets by him. 
Boogie, Jake Feathers Coyle, Carrie Skipworth, and Chase Jesse getting the crowd going. 1-0 count to Bank Starbuck. Two straight backwards Ks for Austin St. Laurent. How about three? Good fastball in there, called strike one. He's back in the count. Good frame by Ezell at the knees, too. Carolina looking to snap a season-long six-game losing streak with a win today. 1-1. Lined into right. Stewart back on the warning track. He makes the catch. No, it gets out of his glove. It's off the glove of Stewart. The run's going to come in, and it's the second error in the inning for Carolina. The game's still alive. Oh, my goodness. That's a tough play ranging back on the track, but goodness. That's a tough break. Starbuck, who just missed a home run his previous A-B, almost had another one there. Warning track power, and Stewart just couldn't get a glove to it. It was in and out of the glove of Stewart, so two errors in the inning for Carolina have resulted in one run across so far. It'll bring up Brandon McMillian, who represents the tying run. It's a 1-0 count to him. Standing on second base after the E9 is Bank Starbuck. That one's grounded to left side. Farrell, sliding stop, the throw to first, in time. Out number three, and the Disco Turkeys are back in the win column. Great play by Kicks to make that pick and a strong throw, and great job, Austin St. Laurent, getting those final three outs. And that's going to do it. Your final score here from Winston-Salem on July 3rd. Part of Dash City Independence Celebration. It is 12 to 10. The Disco Turkeys win an absolute thriller. And the Disco Turkeys are back in the win column. As previously mentioned, they advanced to 6 and 15 on the year. And they improved to 1 and 2 on the year against Greensboro. A very tough loss for this Monarchs team. But don't worry. These two teams will play each other again very, very soon. In fact, as soon as next Wednesday, or two Wednesdays from now, I should say, In July 14th, that time. at the home stadium of the Greensboro Grasshoppers, mind you. That'll be a phenomenal game. To oh, watch. that'll be fun. It'll be a very fun game. And St. Laurent putting on the sequin jacket down there on first base. And we'll get into the rundown in the roost. This has been a very fun game for Carolina. First time that they've won in six games. And really, if you ask me, Brett, there's two players that really deserve all the credit. Three, really. Chase Jesse, phenomenal start. Carolina would not have been in this game if it weren't for the great pitching performance that he put on. He went six innings, and he only gave up three hits, and two of them were strung together to make up a two-run shot from Devin Bartley. But until that point... What's the biggest part of that line, though? 10 Ks. 10 Ks for Chase Jesse through six innings, the starter for Carolina. A phenomenal game. And then the other two, if you ask me, Hayden Setzer and Austin St. Laurent. No doubt about it. Setzer, a couple of hits in his return, the biggest one in the ball game, one of the biggest of the season, to ultimately put the nail on the coffin, but I think the biggest thing for me, Graham, is the resiliency of this ball club. With all that went on in this ball game and all that's gone on recently, you saw fight, you saw energy, you saw resiliency, you saw tenacity, and for the most part, the most important thing here, they found a way to win, and they did everything right. They hit well situa situationally. They threw strikes on the mound. They got the big outs when they needed to get them. They found a way to come out with a very important W. And a very important W it was. It gets them back in the win column, and it's the first time that they've won since last Thursday against the Martinsville Ponies. And it's got to be a sweet win after everything that went on in this game with the starter for Greensboro, Patty McGonigal, throwing at Kicks Farrell. Everything that happened, the big inning when Greensboro took advantage of the poor bullpen performance from Carolina. They hung five runs in the top of the eighth. Credit Greensboro, they didn't go down quietly. They scored eight no, runs in the last all. scored eight runs in the last two innings to make this game a lot closer than it should have been. Austin St. Laurent gets the player of the game jacket. And for the first time 
in nine days and seven games, Carolina is back in the win column. That'll do it for us here on Dash City Independence Day. It's a win for Carolina and their sixth of the year. It is 12 to 10, the final score here. And one last time for everybody here that made this phenomenal game happen and everybody here that's going to make this phenomenal day happen on into the night as the celebration continues here at Truist. Graham Tuck signing off for Brett Wiseman and everybody else. One last time, final score, 12 to 10. Disco Turkeys win.